Hello, fam. Welcome back again to the to um, today's life. I promise you guys, um, today we're just gonna have a special guest on our life today. Um, if you have no idea about who Uncle Jarvis is, then probably I'll be introducing you to um, this amazing man um, who have just moved to Tanzania. And he has some amazing thing to share with us. So if you just join, kindly go ahead and smash the like button and let me know um, where you're watching this from. But thank you so much for joining. Thank you so much for joining. Um, technically, I was facing some challenges coming on live today because of my camera. My USB was having some few issues. But the good news is, you know, we've we've been able to make it happen. Thanks for joining, Joyce. Um, thanks for joining. So if you just joined, make sure you go ahead and smash the like button. And today we have a wonderful guest called Uncle Jarvis. So if you don't know who Uncle Jarvis is, make sure you stay tuned. Um, we will learn a lot about, you know, moving to the African continent because this brother has done it. He has passed through the process and he's here to give you one of the best experience, his experience, share his insight, and also, you know, give you some perspective, especially for those who are interested in retiring on the African continent. He has all the analysis, all the views, and all the experience. And if you have any question today, basically about moving to the African continent, we will be getting it from the horse's own mouth which is Uncle Jarvis, he will join us soon. So if you just join, thanks for joining, Angie, thanks for joining. If you just join, just go ahead and smash the like button whilst we wait for Uncle Jarvis to join us soon. And we have some few questions. So if you have any question that you want us to ask Uncle Jarvis, comment the question below and I'll be able to go ahead and ask him those questions. So if you just join, just go ahead and comment below and, um, you know, I can relay all these questions to Uncle Jarvis. We want to take it one by one, step by step, you know, for him to answer all these questions about moving to the African continent, because I believe he has done it and he has the best experience. He, you know, he can basically tell everyone the ins and the out, you know, so I know it's late, but let's just try to keep up with it. So comment below and let me know if you have any question, you know, so I can just have it prepared, you know, for Uncle Jarvis to answer. Thank you so much, Angie. Thank you so much, African Millennials. Thank you so much. So comment below whilst I wait for Uncle Jarvis to join. Comment below, um, you know, comment below. Comment below right now. Thanks for joining. Thanks for joining. Let's wait for Uncle Jarvis to join in a minute and you know get this live going so uncle jarvis i just posted a link right here you know you can click on it and join so bring your questions and you know let's prepare these questions for uncle jarvis right now let's prepare these questions for uncle jarvis right now also he'll be sharing um some of his you know project going on in that African country. I don't want to tell you which African country he is in right now. We'll basically ask all these questions. So, um, you know, let's wait for Uncle Jarvis to join in. Let's wait for Uncle Jarvis to join in. So if you have any question, just go ahead and comment below and I can go ahead and ask Uncle Jarvis for you. Um, basically, he can share all his experience. And don't forget to smash the like button. And if you're just watching and you haven't subscribed to join the family, you can go ahead and do so. I don't charge you a fee. I don't charge you a penny when you subscribe. So um, Joyce said, um, you know, I need to ask, can I get a one way ticket or you have to buy a round trip? So these are some of the questions that you should be preparing, you know, for Uncle Jarvis to answer them for you. So if you really want to know more information about moving to the African continent, especially, you know, the seniors who are interested in retiring on the African continent, this is an amazing, you know, uh, um, opportunity for you to ask all your questions. So let's wait for Uncle Jarvis to join in so real quick. And um, if you just joined, thank you so much for joining. I appreciate all the love 
the support. You know, somebody said congratulations on your 10K subscribers. I really appreciate all the love. We didn't believe you would get here that fast and, you know, that soon. But I just wanted to say thank you so much. Thank you so much. Yes, sir. How are you doing today? How are you doing today? All right, well. Yes, you on, you on, you on. How are you doing today? How are we doing good, man? Doing great, man. I'm Just uh, enjoying our life here in Africa. Yeah, first of all, I just wanted to say thank you so much for um, being able to, you know, present yourself and, you know, being even willing to do this whole life with me. Um, unfortunately, you know, I, to be honest, I was having some issue with my USB. It wouldn't let me connect my camera. And I was just like, damn, why would you, you know, why would this happen at the last minute? But I'm glad everything worked out. And there's a lot of people on here that wants to know how Uncle Jarvis was able to do this, you know. Um, so tell us more about, you know, where you are right now. You know, we, people just wanted to know where you are right now because it looks like you are not in the U.S. I know. I'm in Moshi, Tanzania. We've been okay. here since uh, August 7th. Wow. So you've been here since August 7th. That's about... You almost a month and a half, right? Well, actually, we're at uh, I think a little bit over two months, huh? Okay, okay. So, so there's a lot of people on here that just wanted to know, um, you know, a lot of you know uh, um, stuff when it comes to moving to the African continent. People are really, really trying to figure out how to do it. And you are the type of person who have gone through the process. You know, you, right now you in Tanzania right now. You've been there for a month. You are enjoying, you know, I spoke to you for a while. You you always give me a positive feedback. Now, I have some series of questions that I wanted to ask you. And um, uh, the first one is, did you visit, you know, Tanzania first before you decided to move? Or how did the whole moving thing happen? No, um, I never visited Africa before I made it my home. Um, mm -hmm. The way it happened was, I guess about two years ago, I watched a Water Maya video. And okay. I was showing some, some beautiful places in Africa, which I had never seen before. And uh, I was fascinated. And uh, it made me want to do research. And I just kept researching and researching. I think I told you before, uh, Madagascar. Okay. I like, um, we, we just, I looked at all the different countries and um, there was another YouTuber named Amon Ra. Maybe some of your okay. listeners may. He, we planned the trip, he planned the trip mm -hmm. April, April 30th of this year. Okay. I signed up, paid my money and everything. 10 day trip to uh, Nairobi. Okay. Nairobi and Mombasa, Kenya. He lived in Mombasa. Um, okay. African American living in Mombasa for 22 years. Wow. Before the trip happened, before the trip happened, the brother passed away. So the trip didn't happen. You know, it gave wow. us our money back and everything. And, but that didn't stop me. You know, I, I I still know I want to I want to go to Africa. And um we're looking at the Gambia. Um, we chose Gambia, but at the time, Gambia was not open. So we said, okay. we need to leave. So we go to Tanzania. We hang out for a couple of months. Then when it opens, we'll head over to Gambia. Mm -hmm. We met people, uh, found the orphanage, and mm -hmm. this is home. We're, 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 we're here now. We're not going to Gambia. If we go to be to visit, but this is home now, right here. Wow. So, so basically, you know, you did your research first because you had yes. the, you, know, you had the zeal to actually visit the African continent based on, you know, watching YouTube videos and you decided to travel and, you know, you faced some challenges, but that didn't really stop you. You said, what, no matter what happened, I'm, I'm still going. And then when you visited Tanzania, you know, you realize 
nah, nah, I'm not going anywhere because initially you wanted to go to Gambia, but right. guess what? The borders were closed and you ended up in Tanzania and you decided to stay. Now, really? I mean, there's a lot of African diaspora who wants to really move to the you know African continent, especially West Africa. What really made you choose East Africa? I mean, I don't understand why, what, what really connected you to East Africa? Well, as I said before, once, once uh, uh, I knew that Tanzania was open, I mm -hmm. watched a video of Traveling Sister. She said that the borders are open. You don't mm -hmm. need COVID tests, nothing like that. So I was like, this sounds like a good one. So I, I booked a ticket. Mm -hmm. um, we're supposed to leave Wednesday at 6 p.m. Mm -hmm. Monday at 9 a.m., Traveling Sister did a video saying that the, the Minister of Health in Tanzania says you have to have a negative COVID test before entering the country, and the test can be no older than 72 hours. Wow. Okay. Now I'm leaving, I'm leaving Wednesday. This is Monday. Okay. Mm -hmm. So I was in New York City. So I'm running around now. I have to find somebody that can do this test and get it back to me ASAP. Because I don't have time. Mm -hmm. One to one place, it's going to be two weeks. Can't do that. This one says it's going to be three days. Can't do that. He gave us a number of one that we, we could get in 24 hours. So we went there. Mm -hmm. He said, it's 1 o'clock p.m. now, Monday. Mm -hmm. He said, we can't guarantee 24 hours, but we'll get it back as soon as we can. Mm -hmm. okay. So we did the test. But by the way, the test was $150 each. It was three okay. of us. Okay. So we take the test. I call them the next day, Tuesday. Results not back. Call us back in the morning. Wednesday, nine o'clock in the morning. They said, we have two of the tests back, but we're waiting on the third one. Mm -hmm. Okay. Maybe 30 minutes later, she called me. We have the third one. Okay, so now we got to race over there, get the <laughs> result, because we got to right. get out of here. Right. And uh, I think we got, the, we got the results maybe about 11 o'clock. Our flight leave at 6. Wow. Okay. So that's how close it was. Wow. So we, we got the information. When we got to the airport, um, they asked for it one time. I want to okay. say when we were in New York, they asked to see it. Okay. And after that, they never asked again to see the paperwork. Okay. However, we saw a young lady in Qatar. She made mm -hmm. it all the way to Qatar. And they told her she didn't she have can't. the paperwork. She can't go further. Wow. No further. They turned her around. That's right. So you were basically fortunate. Well, I, I guess if you want to call it that, I mean, um, we would have had to cancel the flight if we didn't get the, the information back. So right, we we're trying not to. We we're trying not to. And we were cutting it real close. But we made it. Wow, that's interesting. So basically, I mean, everything was bound to happen when you when you pay attention to the details and the challenges you just you know went through. Everything was bound to happen because you you felt like you needed to do this, and maybe who you know who knows the universe just wanted to make it happen, and you just got everything in time on time, and then you know now you are in Tanzania. But in a long story short, you know, so far how is just your experience in Tanzania? One Been there for a month? Uh, actually, um, as I said before, it's a little bit over two months, okay? Mm -hmm. We got here August 7th. So what's the day like? The 13th? Mm -hmm. 13th. So we're like um, maybe 64 days or something like that. Mm -hmm. uh, a lot of things that happened. I mean, when we got here, we we hit the ground running, you know, we we, we, we got into, you know, trying to do some Airbnb and, you know, trying to help people out when they get here. And right. um, uh, we picked somebody, a couple up from the airport. Uh, did you see that? Yeah. Yeah, we picked a couple up from the airport um, a couple of days ago. I can't remember. 
Um, and we're just trying to help people that are coming, you know, okay. so that their experience may be easier mm-hmm. than I was. You know, we had some challenges, you know, but uh, we persevered. You know, I, I believe in the ancestors, you know, and I think they lead you and they won't lead you the wrong way. Right. It wasn't it wasn't me saying that I should stay here in Tanzania. You know, uh, it was the ancestors saying, hey, listen, you stay, stay right here. Right. So, so 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 this is this is my question, right? I'm yeah. still curious. I'm still curious. So yeah. you decided to visit Tanzania, right? Initially, that right. was your plan. Initially, right. that was your plan to visit. Right. Now, when you got to Tanzania, you know, you, you didn't know anybody over there. You just went and right. when you just when you just got there, you decided to retire in Tanzania. And now you got a place that you you are renting, you are staying. How did you figure sure. out all this when you don't know anybody? How how were you able to come up with this? Because I know you you really got to have a source to get all these things in place for you. Man, like, okay, we the guy who picked us up from the airport. Um, he was running for. Um, NP, like, uh, uh, what is Parliament? He was running for Parliament. And, you know, okay. we had a lot of conversation. After he picked us up from the airport, he took us to the bank to exchange money. He took us to uh, get our cell phone, you know. And, and then we, I think we had a little breakfast. Mm -hmm. And eventually, he took me to my Airbnb. Mm -hmm. When I got to the Airbnb, there was a young man there to, to greet me. Uh, mm -hmm. It was his friend's Airbnb. And okay. He opened the door for me and showed me around and stuff. And he said, uh, anything you need, I'll be here. I'm just a couple of minutes away. And, you know, that weekend, he, you know, we got there Friday. So Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. We're supposed to leave Monday. Okay. Uh, from the Airbnb. And we liked it. So since he knew the brother, we talked to him and we arranged to stay there for three months at the same location. And over that weekend, this guy is calling me dad, calling my wife, mom. Huh. I'm not, you know, we're not used to this kind of stuff, you know? And yeah. As time went on, hell, I started calling him son. Okay. And long story short, he's 29 years old. He's my son now. He's got a room in my home, you know? Okay. So when I left the Airbnb, I took him with me. I also okay. have a daughter um, who was, at that time, was supposed to be maybe a, the helper at the Airbnb or whatever. Same mm -hmm. thing. We bonded. 19-year-old uh, daughter uh, getting ready to just start college next month. She also has a, a room in my home. Things are done different here. Family is real family, okay? Doesn't necessarily have to be blood now. Right. Doesn't necessarily have to be blood, okay? And even though I've only known these individuals for 60 days, we love each other, you know? I made a commitment to them. I told this girl, hey, I'm going to make sure you're all right in college. Don't worry about a thing. I'm, my wife and I are going to fly. It's like maybe 15 hours away if we were to drive to where she's going mm -hmm. to college. So we decided we're going to go ahead and fly. We're going to fly mm -hmm. over, drop her off, you know, hang out with her for a couple of days, make sure she's situated in the dorm and everything, right? And then we're mm -hmm. going to fly back. We're going to fly back. Yeah. Uh, wow. It was supposed to be just my wife and I. Now we got like, my 82-year-old father-in-law. He's here. He said, look here, he got to go. So he says, you know, y'all not going without me. I have to go too. So he's going. And now my son, he want to go. So everybody's going. So. Mm -hmm. so let me ask you this. Let me ask you this. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Um, you know, coming from the U.S., I know the culture yeah. is very different, right, from both sides. Yeah. Now, yeah. for the 
past one month being in Tanzania, how are you really assimilating with the local people? Like, how is the culture differences and how are you catching up? You know, is it, you know, because most people say, well, I don't, I don't know how to speak the language. I don't know this. I don't know that. I don't think I'll fit in in any African country. Now you fall in the same category. You don't know how to speak the language. You don't know anything about the culture, but finally you, you did it. How are you really adjusting with the whole uh, um, or culture differences? Well, it's a lot easier for me because I have my son and my daughter. You know, mm -hmm. they, they both speak Swahili, so it's not a problem. And they're teaching me Swahili also. Mm -hmm. And they both speak English, uh, but there are things about America that they don't know. I'm teaching okay. them about America. They're teaching me about Tanzania. So it's a win-win, you know. And believe me, this is something that the West never wanted to see happen, okay? Continental Africans and Diasporians getting together. They never wanted to see this happen. Well, it's too late. It's happening now. You can't stop it now. It's happening. Mm -hmm. yeah. and, and, and that's, mm -hmm. go ahead. I feel like, we, you know, we're pioneers in this, you know? We're, 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 we're the one that's laying the foundation for everybody else. When you guys come, you know, um, to live a better life, you know, like, there's no, uh, what's the word I want to use? There's no stress, no stress at all. You can relax, let your guards down. You don't have to be on your P's and Q's every, every time you go out the house, mm -hmm. even at the bank. I was at the bank the other day uh, when I picked up the couple so they could change their money. There was a guy, man, he had a whole lot of money, you know, stacks and stacks of money. He just put the money in a backpack and just walked out the bank. That would never wow. happen. Happen. Well, well, I tell you, it might happen, but I guarantee you, he wouldn't make it fall with that backpack. <laughs> no, sir. <swear. laughs> no. Now, just, mm -hmm. now let me ask Nothing. Go ahead. Now, let me ask you this. There, there's a lot of people who ask me questions like, Oh, is it safe, you know, for, for me to be in Africa because, you know, I've had a lot of things happen over there, you know, coming from the U.S. and living in Tanzania right now. How do you feel when it comes to safety? Okay. I'm going to make this story kind of long, okay? Because it, it's right with what you're talking about. Mm -hmm. There's another brother that uh, we have, like, I think, you know, we have, like, separate quarters in my home like you got the main house and then you have other places outside it mm -hmm. on the property anyway the lady that owns this house she called me and asked me could her brother stay here for a while he's coming to town he's he's from norway he's from mm -hmm. here but he's been living in norway okay i said sure i said sure all right this guy and myself, we're walking down the street at night. It's like maybe nine o'clock. There's these mm -hmm. two guys that are across the street. And they, they came on our side of the street. And they start walking behind us. Okay. Mm -hmm. Now, you know how it go, right? So I'm like, you know. <laughs> yeah, right? looking back over your shoulders. You know, yeah. Why are these guys walking behind us, you know? And then they finally... They passed us up. So I, I said, the brother's name is I do. I said, I do. Man, I said, you can't do that in America, man. You can't be walking behind people like that. Mm -hmm. Not that yeah. close. Not mm -hmm. that close. Close. He said, oh, it's no problem. It's no problem. He said, come on. You know, and those guys never, they never paid attention to us. Mm -hmm. So when saying that, yeah, you're safe. You're very safe. You're very safe. Wow. Woman, women walk down the street late at night. Nobody's gonna bother you. Nobody's gonna bother you. I go to the bank, you know, make my little withdrawal, and you know, I walk out the bank. I'm not, I'm not looking around, no, nah. because we don't mm -hmm. have that problem. Problem. And it's so bad. Security everywhere. Man. Security is everywhere. Boy. And they don't. So they don't have a. Uh, Handgun, they have like AK 47, AR 15, pump shotguns, you know, <laughs> big guns. At the bank, 
at the ATM, at the mall, anywhere where money is exchanged, there's going to be some security. So, yeah. You know, so basically, you, you, know, you feel safe. You feel safe. The crime rate is, listen, the crime rate is so low because I go to this coffee shop uh, almost every day. And uh, mm -hmm. there's a guy sitting there with a pump shotgun. I mean, he's just sitting there like this, you know, so that's intimidating. So I don't think <laughs> nobody will solve no problems, okay? Right. So, so, yeah. Wow. Okay. So now let me ask this. Um, there's people that I have realized, especially from the African diaspora, who are retired. And, you know, I realize most people sometimes retire Thailand, travel and retire in different, different um, countries or continent. And most people never thought about retiring on an African, uh, on the African continent or in any African country. Now, let's say if you are talking to, you know, a senior who is maybe looking into retiring and looking to maybe relocate place, would you suggest that you retire in, you know, an African country? Of course, your, your, your money will go further. Um, we just use an example. Let's say uh, maybe your social security check is a thousand dollars. You can live quite well. You can live quite well on a thousand dollars here. Um, okay. Whereas we know that in the United States, in most cities, in especially major cities, it's going to be tough with that thousand dollars. It's going to be pretty tough to find decent housing. You know, mm -hmm. uh, you have to eat. But here, you know, a senior that wants maybe a a small one bedroom or even maybe a three bedroom house. You can afford that. You know, let's okay. say your rent is three hundred dollars a month. You got you a nice mm -hmm. house, you know, maybe um somebody to help you out. You know, mm -hmm. um and and life here is different. Okay. I like to go out. I'm ten minutes from my my home my home here. I'm ten minutes from Downtown, uh, the market, uh, clubs, restaurants, um, okay. everything is 10 minutes away. We walk. And if I don't feel like walking, they got these covered um, three wheel motorcycles. They call them <laughs> Ujaji. Ujaji. It's only mm -hmm. like less than a dollar. They'll take you anywhere around town for less than a dollar. Mm -hmm. yeah, so, you know, so basically, you know, your money will really go far when when, when sure. you retire on the African continent. Definitely, definitely. And you you won't have a problem getting your funds, okay? If you okay. have an ATM code, you're good, okay? You can still let your check keep coming to the bank in America. Just use your debit card to draw the money out, you know? Okay. Now, in order to get an account here, this is important. Mm -hmm. Okay. You must start the process of residency before you can open up a bank account. Bank account. Now, now, we have a visa, a one-year visa, but you have to leave the country every 90 days. Okay. That visa is $100, 100 US dollars. There's a program that they have for seniors that are 60 and above. It's 550 US dollars. Okay. What that does is it prepares you for residency. It's good for two years, but you don't have to leave the country. Okay. Okay. And, but it's only for seniors that are over 60. Then you can get the account and have your check to come here. Wow. Okay. Yeah. Open the account. We did all the research. So what we're doing, we're going to let this year ride out. I paid the hundred dollars. Mm -hmm. And the year is almost out. Then we're going to go for the other one. The wow. two-year so, one, $550, yeah. Every two years, wow. you have to renew it. Renew it. Okay. Right. So basically, you can uh, um, open um, a local Tanzania bank account when you get a resident permit. No, you don't actually have to have the permit. You have to be in a process of establishing residency. You don't even okay. have to have it. You just have to be in the process. You know, okay. they'll give you a form and then you take it to the bank. There you go. There you go. Okay. okay. As I said before, we, we, we could do it right now if we want to. But I said, okay. 
if I were, I've already paid a hundred dollars for a year. I just got to so wait. <laughs> I'm gonna get that hundred dollars worth. Okay. Yeah. Then mm -hmm. we'll do the other process. Right. Mm -hmm. And so we're going to, um, when we leave the country, we're going to go to Mombasa. We're going to Mombasa, um, spend a day up there and come on back. We just need that stamp on our visa. Oh, your your voice went your voice went out. Um, your voice. Okay, it came somebody's in. trying to call me and uh, uh, let me go out and I'll come back in. Okay. Okay. All right. Okay. All right. So thank you so much, Uncle Javis. He will be back soon. So if you have any questions that you really want to ask Uncle Javis, just comment below. Like he said, if you pay attention to everything, every information he's sharing. It will really help you if you decide to move to you know tanzania you know because that's where he is right now and um he can ask um he can basically help you he helps a lot of people who are interested in moving to tanzania he guides you through the process and all this stuff so you know he's doing an amazing job and you know if you have any question please um uh uh, uh you know comment below and I'll ask him. Um, so that is my question, people that move to Africa and that are not retirement age, how to get income. So like I said before, if you are not retired, you know, I just made a video about it. If you are not retired and you want to move to the African continent, one of the first things you have to figure out is how do you make revenue? How do you have a source of income? You need to figure out what you'll be doing to actually get a source of income. And I suggested in my previous video that you can go out there, plan for a year or two, depending on that African country. If it's Ghana, Gambia, or Tanzania, you can do a two years plan, um, save up the cash and move. And that within that two years, you can use that two years stay and figure out what you'll be doing to actually make money in the country. And, you know, because of technology these days, you can basically create a lot of businesses online or you can just come up with an idea, work towards this, or you can even establish an on online business in the U.S. or the U.K., depending on where you, you know, you are coming from. You can already establish that online business before you finally make that move. And trust me, you don't need a lot to actually sustain yourself on the African continent. You just need a decent source of income. You need a decent source of income. You need a decent um, <laughs> um, source of income. Um, okay, so let me uh, let me let me send the link again. Um, you need a, a decent source of income to be able to, um, you know, make it. But um. Yeah, Uncle Javis will join again. So comment, comment, comment below and, you know, let me ask your question for you. Thank you so much, Troy. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Um, thank you so much. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Um, that's the link right there. That's le the link. Oh, so comment below. Comment below if you have any question, I can go ahead and ask Uncle Javis. Just bring your questions in. Any question you have about moving to Tanzania, he will basically answer it for you. So, you know, bring your questions in. Bring your questions in. Yeah, go look at the video. It, it would definitely help. Um, it would definitely help. But like I said, if you really want to move, please... Um, Yes, sir. Welcome back again. Welcome back again. All right. All right. Yeah, we are. We're back at you. Um, mm -hmm. Where are we at? We're talking about the seniors, right? Mm hmm. So, yeah. so somebody said, somebody said, I don't understand when he said after 90 days, he has to leave the country, then return. Uh, somebody said they didn't really understand. OK, let me explain. OK, this one year visa, it's a. Uh, I can't remember the name, what they call it. Okay, even though it, it's good for one year, mm -hmm. every 90 days, you have to leave the country. Mm -hmm. But Kenya is not very far. So you just drive to Kenya, cross the border, get your stamp, and come on back. That's all. That's smart. 
I mean, that's, that's, that's it. That's it. And that's your requirement. You know, that's what they require. So, you know, I guess they don't want you to get too comfortable here for a year. You might not, you know, but, go. you know, we want to do the, the right thing as far as immigration is concerned, you know. Right. But eventually, um, we're going to do the residency. Now, Tanzania doesn't have a dual citizenship now. Mm -hmm. If you want a citizenship, you have to give up your your your, your U.S. citizenship. Mm -hmm. Okay. But so we're not going to do that. But I mean, what citizenship? Residency. You can live here legally, so we don't need citizenship. The only thing mm -hmm. citizenship would allow you to vote, maybe, but I mean, what are the advantages? You know? Right. Yeah, so, I see what you're saying. Right, right. So, yeah. so, 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 yeah, so let me, so let me ask you this. Um, you know, you've been there for a month and a half. Um, I heard you said, you know, you, you're working on some orphanage. Um, you know, can you tell us more about it? Because uh, a lot of people, you know, have really asked about, you know, the orphanage stuff, you know, so can you share more information on it? Sure. Yeah. The orphanage is in Arusha. We were in Arusha for the first three weeks. And mm -hmm. then, um, then we moved to Moshi, which is about two hours away from, from Arusha. Now, okay. the orphanage. Our, our other home when we were there um, is right down the street, maybe two minutes from the orphanage. In order to get home, we would have to walk through their drive area in order to get to our home. And these kids, um, you can imagine, like, you ever been, like, around maybe 10 puppies and they all jump on you, right? Mm -hmm. and, and, well, imagine these children, you know, they all just... They swarm around you. They hug you. They, you know, they're all on my legs and my, my, you know, and it just, I, I can't tell you what it does to your heart, man, you know? Right. Um, however, um, they need a lot. Okay. They need okay. a lot. That's another reason why we, we decided to, to stay here to help okay. the children. Um, mm -hmm. We saw a need, and um, and we tried to help. You know, uh, we're trying to help, I should say. Um, we looked at their appearances, and we say, you know, a good haircut would probably make these kids feel better. Mm -hmm. So we paid for ninety kids to get a haircut. Okay, ninety thank kids. you so much. Yeah, no problem whatsoever. Here is different, like. Girls wear their hair short. You know, girls get a haircut too, basically. So, yeah. like I said, 90 kids got a haircut, boys and girls. Okay. And then yeah. We started thinking, I saw this one needs some shoes. So I bought a pair of shoes. And things just kind of started to blossom. And I started thinking, you know, my son told me, say, you know, I know, you know, you want to help and everything. Say, but dad, uh, at some point, you know, you have to you slow need down. help too. Yeah, you have to slow down. And so if anybody wants to donate, go to living my best life in Ghana. Okay. At gmail at gmail.com. Okay, okay, let me put it on there. Yeah. So, you know, if you guys wanted to support, you know, the project he's doing for the orphanage in Tanzania, please just go ahead and, you know, donate. Leaving my best life in Ghana at Gmail. Is it on PayPal? Um, now, that part, when you go to uh, Living My Best Life in Ghana, um, yeah. I think um, they also have the website, livingmybestlifeingghana.com, I believe. But you'll get the information on how to, how to support, you know, and, okay. uh, and these children need everything. We're organizing, like people are sending, um, uh, packages and, uh, you know, these kids need everything, shoes, clothing, uh, toothpaste, uh, hair products, uh, you name it, 
you name mm -hmm. it, uh, firewood for cooking. They 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 use wood to cook with, and mm -hmm. and they have to purchase firewood. Just you know, they're just trying to make it. Okay, they're like mm -hmm. I think right now. There's like maybe seventy to eighty children there right now. Mm -hmm. There's 120 of them that are in boarding school. They actually okay. live at the school, but when they have a break from school, mm -hmm. then they come home. Where's home? The orphanage. Okay. So at, at so Salt Point, there are 200 children there when everybody's back from school, right? There are mm -hmm. 200 children there, and and they all got to eat. And, uh, you know, so people lot, that have children, you know kids can of, eat, right? Right. A lot of people, a lot of people want to know how, like I said, uh, um, to support. So this is the email. If you really want to donate support, um, send an email to living my best life in Ghana at gmail.com. And, um, I believe they can coach you on, you know, what to do next to be able to send, uh, uh maybe your donation. And also somebody wanted to know, do you know the name of the orphanage? A lot of people want to help. You no. Know? Yeah, it's called for for Raja for Raja. I think it's spelled F R A G I. I believe. Um, I'll get the information. And definitely put it in chat. They also have a PO box too. You know, um, okay. for people that would like to send something. You know, um, but what we're doing is this thing has gotten bigger than myself. Okay, I can't manage it which is why okay. we have Living My Best Life in Ghana to help manage the pro project. We have, um, uh, we're trying to put together a, a, uh, a committee, you know, so that we can make sure that, guarantee you that this money that you're sending is gonna be used mm -hmm. just for the kids, mm -hmm. nobody else, nobody yeah. else, just the kids. This money only goes to the kids or, 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 or whatever you're sending to the kids, mm -hmm. man. You know, nobody else. We have white people that donate, okay? I'll just tell you something that happened. We're coming back mm -hmm. from a, a trip. We went to Zanzibar, Dar es Salaam. We're on the way back. We get okay. back, it's like maybe eight, nine o'clock at night. And there's these two white guys visiting the orphanage at night. Kids what? sitting on their lap. Yes. So my wife and I came in and said, hey, what's going what on? Mm -hmm. So he said, uh, you know, there was a young guy and an older guy. And they said, we just came off of a, uh, I think maybe it was like seven. It was dark, okay? It was definitely dark. Um, and he said, we're from Paris. Is there a problem? So you're damn right there's a problem. Mm -hmm. You come visit in the daytime. Not at night. Mm -hmm. And we pretty much, we ran them off. So I said then that if we support these kids, we don't have to worry about them coming. Mm -hmm. And those same white guys from France, guess how much they donate? How much? Zero. They didn't donate nothing. They didn't donate nothing. And guess what they wanted to do? They wanted, yeah, to, they, wanted to see all, they wanted to see all the financial books and records and stuff like that. Hell, if you're going to donate, donate. You don't need to see no books and records. Mm -hmm. So we have to support these children, okay? Not them. It's not their children. It's our children. And I'm very passionate about this, too. Mm -hmm. So we have to do this. Not them. Mm-hmm. So then I don't have to come and, and see, see some white people with 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 kids on their lap at night. Mm -hmm. I don't like it. So. Yeah, yeah. So um, this is what I was just from from Uncle Javis on math. It, you know, if 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 you want to su to support, please go ahead and do so. You know, just reach out to Living My Best Life. Um, in Ghana at gmail.com and basically they can coach you on the process to go through to be able to support you know like he said we don't
somebody, you know, from, you know, outside to come in and, you know, mess up with this case. So we have to, you know, play our role, you know, in supporting this so we don't have to get outside, you know, interferences or however they call it. So please, if you support, please go ahead and do so. Living my best life um, in Ghana at gmail.com. And you can go ahead and donate as well. So this is what I wanted to ask. Um, also, a lot of people are saying thank you so much. A lot of people are saying they appreciate it, you know, what you're doing. Um, people, you know, uh, Maria said you are awesome. Um, um, hold on. Okay. A lot of people say, well, you're doing an amazing job. We are coming there in droves. A lot of people say, never trust them. Never trust them. Somebody said, I'll be in Dar es Salaam November 10th. Um, you know, Malika said, let's support ourselves. Yes, we have to do it. Uh, Mary Johnson said, saw the children on YouTube. Very cute. And, um, you know, we need more support for ourselves. We need more support for ourselves. So, um, you know, basically, what, what time is it in Tanzania right now? Uh, 7.22 a.m. Okay, 7.22. Okay. Um, is then you wanted to attach, you know, people haven't asked a lot of questions, but somebody also said, you know, how do they get the resident payment? And also, you know, how do they go, go about doing it? Because they didn't catch that part when you said it. Okay, okay. Now... The one that I was talking about is for seniors now, 60 mm -hmm. years and over. You have to be okay. 60 years and over in order to okay. qualify for this one. It costs mm -hmm. 550 U.S. dollars. It's good for two years. Um, it's You're actually, a, I want to say, a permanent resident. It's just that mm -hmm. you have to renew it every two years. And it's $550, okay. you know. Okay. But you won't have to leave the country every 90 days and come back, though. Right. Mm -hmm. yeah, yeah. So better doing it that way. I mean, it is. Yeah. It will save you a lot of. A lot of people were concerned about will I be able to continue to get my Social Security check or whatever? That's not a mm -hmm. problem. Actually, before I left, I talked to Social Security to make sure that I wouldn't have a problem. And they told me that there's a few countries around the world where they won't send your money to. And mm -hmm. that is. Iran, okay. North Korea, mm -hmm. there's one more, Iran, North Korea, I guess China maybe. Okay. Yeah. So basically like no, African country, no African country was on the list. No, no. Okay. Okay. Well, but, you know, but now they have to have like at least an embassy or something like that. They have to have some kind of communication or whatever so that if they're going to, but however, as I said before, if you leave the your same account that you have in U.S. Mm -hmm. and just use your ATM, you won't have that problem. Uh, then figure yeah. it out later. Figure it out later. Just use your ATM card. Okay. Okay. Sounds very interesting. Sounds okay, very interesting. Somebody mm -hmm. put the name. Yeah. Faraja. Somebody. Yeah. Faraja often, it, you know, research right. it. Yeah. yeah. So... Okay. Interesting okay. story about the the owner and and the director of it. Mm -hmm. He, I told him that I wanted to take pictures of all the children, right? Mm -hmm. So we'd have a, a record, right? Mm -hmm. And he said, "Well, I, I I can't take pictures with my phone." He said, "I had a smartphone, but I had to sell it because one of the children got sick, and I had to take him to the hospital." Mm -hmm. Now I think, as African people, man, we could do better than this. This man had to sell his phone to take a child to the hospital. The child ended up having a hernia, I believe. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Wow. So, which meant that he had a, one of those little cheap phones, you know? Mm-hmm. They could communicate, but that's how tight the budget is. He had to sell his phone to make sure this child got health care. Yeah. yeah, that's really sad. Yeah, man, but you no. Know, um, you know, um, we, so this, 
this is what I this is what I also wanted to ask. Why don't you um you know also maybe found a you know start a foundation? You know, it could just be maybe a a, a foundation of your own that would just maybe relay the help straight to um you know the the parent foundation. You can have us you know like a subsidiary foundation that will help that foundation instead of okay. you know mm -hmm. okay we have things set up through our flagship which is living my best life in ghana okay mm -hmm. we have a, a committee set up and uh, as i said before the reason why we have the committee set up we want to make sure these funds are allocated properly okay mm -hmm. and, mm -hmm. and also what we're doing is um, we want to do whatever is needed first okay uh, mm -hmm. An example is first priority is food. Okay, food. Mm -hmm. At one point, these children were only getting one meal a day. Wow! Come on, one meal a day. Growing children, we can't have that. These children have to have three meals a day. Come on now, mm -hmm. uh, one meal a day. Can you imagine that? Yeah. Maybe uh -huh. Going to school and, and you haven't had nothing to eat. Yeah. Your mind not gonna be on uh the lesson. So at now it's better now. You know, they're getting better better food now, but at one point they were only getting one meal a day. So mm -hmm. also, you know, we we'll have to do another one, man, because there's there's a whole lot more to it, you know. Um, you know, okay. I can introduce you to my son and my daughter and, and we can, you know, we can. Okay. So, okay. So just answer this few questions and you can show us around. Um, somebody said, can you adopt any of these kids? No. Um, okay. what, what, what we want to do is we want to adopt them. Uh, what's, how should I say it? Virtually. Okay. You understand? So like, Let's say you say, I want to support this child. Mm -hmm. Okay, maybe, you know, we, we haven't come up with any numbers or whatever. Let's say $30 a month, you can support this child. And then okay. this is your child. Now, if you want to, you could get the child a phone, right? And you and the mm -hmm. child could talk on WhatsApp every day if you want to, to see what, okay. what's going on with your child. Makes sense. That's, that's something that we're we're looking at for the future, you know. Okay. Um, there are a lot of ideas I have, but we have to put them put them in action. The other thing is, I'll be sixty three. Okay, I'm not a youngster, man. So, you know, uh, we need some people young that can that can handle this kind of stuff. You know. Uh, mm hmm. I mean, you know, I'm old. Hell, I'm tired. You know. <laughs> yeah, I know. Hold on for a second. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, I see what you're saying. I see what you're saying. Um, search grant from various organizations. Um, okay, let me tell you this too. We want to leave this. This is going to be grassroots, okay? We're doing this. We don't want no governmental assistance, uh, no assistance from this party and that party because they're going to want to control how we do things right we don't want that we don't want mm -hmm. that no okay we okay, can't so be able to control it mm -hmm. that makes sense because if you let other companies fund the whole organization they'll start bringing in rules and regulations and basically tell you hey this is this is what we want you guys to do and it's better we control it ourselves so like I said, please let's support. Let's let's try our best and you know send in the best support we can. You know we shouldn't just you know feel sympathy and you know all that stuff. Let's try and support financially. That's that's what we can do. Support financially, you know to to get it. Somebody said no assistance, no loans, just us. Yeah, let me tell you what's going on in front of my home, man. There's like. The army is passing through their training. Mm -hmm. They're 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 the army's they're running they're jogging in front of my house. Oh, the the Tanzanian army. 
Right, right. They're, they're, yeah, they're training. Oh, yeah. Uh, uh, so somebody, yeah. okay. somebody said they were heading to Thailand at first. They were heading to Thailand at first, then they discovered Africa, you know, but there are so many places in Africa to choose from. It's pretty cheap Thailand as well, you know. Okay, listen. Um, yeah, you got Thailand, Vietnam, all those places, sure. But I got something here that you won't see in those places. Mm -hmm. Nothing but black people. Everywhere you look, black people, okay? Now... I'm a married man, okay? I got a wife, I love her and she loves me, okay? I'm not going anywhere, okay? Right. But all the single brothers out there, listen mm -hmm. to me. <laughs> I've never seen so many beautiful women in my life. And I travel around the world, I'm a veteran, okay? I've been around. I've never seen so many beautiful women in my life. I don't know if it's just here in Tanzania, but I mean, because I've never been to another African country. Mm -hmm. But brothers, come over here and get you one of these women, man. Get your wife. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That's for sure. That's a free game. That's a free game that you just yeah, give in. I'm yeah, telling a, you. Yeah, that's a free I'm game. <laughs> Somebody uh people laughing in the comment section. They like uh, uh, <laughs> Yeah. That's hey, a free game. Come see for yourself. That's what you do. Come see for yourself. You think I'm joking. Come see for yourself. My wife and I, we go, we go to this coffee shop and mm -hmm. we sit outside. We sit outside and feel the breeze and just watch, watch the beautiful black people coming through. You know? Mm -hmm. be like, oh, wow. No stress. They, my wife say, Wow, did you see that one? I say, Yeah, baby, but did you see that one? <laughs> <laughs> you know, it's it, it's yeah. um, I always I always find it amazed when you share your story because I'm still kind of like you. It, it takes you know a determined person to really take the step you did because a lot of people have excuses, you know, despite they have you know that type of um goal of moving to the African continent, they'll find so many reasons not to do it. But you know, just show us around. Let's 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 see, uh, um, you know, around you know. Let's see. Somebody said, I'm coming to get one of the brothers. Tell her, come on down, man. <laughs> Beautiful black people everywhere, man. Everywhere. You know, imagine, just imagine, mm -hmm. all you see is black people. That's all you see. Nothing but black people. Okay. Mm -hmm. The richest guy, he's black. The poor one, mm -hmm. he's black. Yeah. Everybody in between, they're black. Yeah. They're all mm -hmm. black. The politician, they're all black. The police commissioner, he's black. The cops, mm -hmm. they're black. You know, mm -hmm. The nurse at the hospital, she's black. The doctor, yeah. he's black. Everybody's black. Mm -hmm. Everybody. The police black. is black. Everybody's black. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, everybody. So every now and then you might see a speck or two, which uh, I ignore them. So, mm -hmm. yeah. Mm -hmm. I was gonna let him see the old man, but he he went back in his room. Okay. Somebody said you look so relaxed and happy. I am. I am. I have no stress, none whatsoever. Mm -hmm. No stress. I have my family members. They're starting to move around now. I'm always the first. I, you know what I do every morning? I get mm -hmm. up every morning. And I watch the sunrise every morning. Mm -hmm. I get up and watch the sunrise every morning, man. I I I probably only miss maybe one. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, in my backyard, I can see uh Mount Kilimanjaro from my backyard. I can see the snow on top of the mount. Yeah. So. I'm living my best life in Tanzania. Tanzania. Yeah. Yes, I am. I am. Yeah. So show us around. Show us around, Uncle Javis. Just show us around when you get time. Uh, somebody just what you were talking about. 
um, U.S. citizens are able to continue to collect retirement, disability, or survivor's benefit once overseas. How benefit payment cannot be made to countries as Cuba, Ukraine, North Korea, and Vietnam? The rest of the countries around the world, you can. That's what he's saying. Those are the only ones that you can't receive your check. Now, there's also a clause that says if you travel to one of those countries, you won't be able to get your check. But as soon as you get back to a country that you can, you'll get your money. Even the, the one that you miss, you'll get it. Mm -hmm. you'll get it back. Now, I've been told, I always have to specify, this is what they told me. Because mm -hmm. I'm not saying it's true. I'm only telling you what they told me. If you have any problem, let's say, for whatever reason, you don't get your check. Mm -hmm. Go to the nearest U.S. Embassy. Okay. The nearest U.S. Embassy, and they'll be able mm -hmm. to assist you. Mm -hmm. That's what I was told before I left the U.S. I was told that by Social mm -hmm. Security. So now I've heard people say, don't believe that this, that. I don't know. I've never had to use it, but that's what they told me. If you have a problem with your check, go to the nearest U.S. Embassy. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That's yeah. 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 So if you have any question, please comment below. Let me ask Uncle Javis. Now, a lot of people wanted to know, you know, do you have a YouTube channel? I do. Actually, I do. Um, we just launched it. It's called Amazing Africa Mama Land. Okay. Amazing, Amazing Africa Mama Land. Mama Land. Okay. M-A-M-A, -M -A, Mama. Okay, let me put it up there and just correct me if I'm wrong. This is it. Amazing Africa Mama Land, correct? Yeah, but, uh, I think you have to um, um, separate, separate the mama. I believe. I believe, yeah, yeah. Okay, so please go and subscribe to Uncle Javis' channel. It's called Amazing Africa Mama Land. We don't, have any, um, we don't have any video. content there. Right now. If you go there, you, you'll see a couple of videos with the children. Uh, we're not sure. We may have to take those out. You know, they got certain laws about kids and stuff like that. So we may have to take those down in order to put up some more video. Wait up. You want to say good morning? Mm -hmm. You just woke up. My daughter just woke up, okay? Mm -hmm. <laughs> good morning, Hi. <laughs> Hi. How are you doing? That's my daughter. Uh, and you? I'm doing fine. I'm doing fine. Okay. Uh, okay, sweet. Okay. Yeah. So yeah, that's, the, um, that's mm -hmm. the um the YouTube channel. Um we're gonna start to put up um uh, uh, videos soon. Uh, we want to buy some some professional equipment. Um uh, uh, okay. not just you know, some mics and uh GoPro and stuff like that. Uh, we're also uh, uh, trying to make a studio. Hey, old man. Come say hello, old man. Come say hello. Hmm. I'll let you holler at your old man. Okay. okay. He's a Jamaican citizen. Uh, we went to Jamaica and picked him up. And my, my wife's uh, father. Father. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Hey, daddy. You dress up. And there's my you, wife. How you doing, old man? How you doing? Say good morning. Morning. Yes, sir. How, How are you doing? doing? I'm good. I'm good. That's Mr. Wesley Thomas. Yeah. <laughs> Mr. Wesley, how are you doing? How's everything going on? He can't hear. Good morning. Oh. <laughs> it's my wonderful right. wife. Hi, my how are you? Come in the light. Can't uh, see. You come outside. Okay, 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 okay. The, the director's telling me to come outside, okay? I'm not a director. Oh, you're not a director? No, okay. I'm just the wife. Yeah, the wife. Hi. Hey. Hi, how are you doing? Good. Oh, good, good, good. This is my daddy. Get okay. in there. Come on, man. Get, Get in, in there. Get in the picture, old man. <laughs> you're, you're having a lot of fun. Oh, yeah. yeah, yeah. There we go. Oh, man, how you like in Africa? Oh, you like Africa, daddy? That's it. That's good. It's good. It's good. Say good. Yeah. Say, say good. excellent. Say excellent. I say good. You say excellent. 
Oh. I love my daddy. <laughs> See, now, now, now this, this is living right here, okay? We're not just existing, we're living, okay? Hey, uh, hey. Who are you talking to? I don't know this person. Uh-oh. Kofi? Oh. Yeah, Hi, I'm Kofi. Kofi. Hi, how are you? My name is Sharon, and I'm the lucky woman to be married to this one. Yeah, okay. yeah she got lucky, man. I'll tell you, she really got lucky, okay? okay. I got lucky. He got blessed. He <laughs> look at all this. Look, what? look, look. Look at all this. <laughs> What'd you say, old man? Everyone laughing down here. What? Okay, but it's good. What you say, old man? What you say? I said one is lucky. And one is, and one is blessed. Okay, okay, we're all blessed. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, okay, okay. I'll, I'll get back on script, okay? <laughs> Go ahead. You got some more questions for me? Um, um, Please make sure you bring in your questions if you have any. So, some people say they just wanted to see around, you know, uh, um, where, you know, you live. And um, they just wanted to see around. Somebody said the whole generation is in Africa. Um, okay. See what the wife. Okay. Let me uh, take you guys out for a little bit. Okay. Somebody said. Lord's willing, I'll be on my way there soon. And thank you yeah. for answering the question. I myself is a veteran looking for a humble spirited woman to marry after proving process a year or two. Okay, here we go. Uh, let's see. Let's see. Kitchen? Kitchen. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> It looks it's like you're okay. Somebody the said the pantry. Okay. <laughs> Somebody say what? Somebody was asking um from okay, hold on. Somebody said from Jamaica to straight to Africa. Wow, inspired. Um somebody said uh um I heard you cannot buy land in Tanzania unless you are a citizen or resident. Is that true? Uh, yeah, 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 yeah. As a as a resident, you can. However, mm -hmm. um, we want to. Um, okay. Let's see. Let me show you around. Yeah, yeah. We just wanted to see around a lot of people. The old man, um, all you do is watch TV. You just watch, watch TV, TV all day. That's watch all they TV. do all day. Okay. What? This is a courtyard. Okay. 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 Going out the uh, the back. I'm going out the back door. Okay. Okay. Going out the back door. Let's see. My backyard right here. I'm always amazed how big this compound is. It's like you can build another house over there. Morning. Uh, it's not clear. I was going to show you the mountain, but it's not clear. It, okay. It's kind of cloudy. You can't see it. But when it's clear, you can see uh, Mount Kilimanjaro. And, uh, mm -hmm. and the other. Can you see the small one? It's too cloudy, mm -hmm. huh? Yeah, I cloudy. can't see it. You can't see it. Yeah, it's a little too cloudy. Okay. We're going to take you around. Uh, on a quick little tour, okay? Mm -hmm. um, and tell them, go and subscribe to the YouTube channel. Okay, so, yes. I I, I even forgot. Hold on for a second. Let me put it here. So, um, you see the bananas? Yes, yes. Okay. Hold on. Um, hold on. Let me find this. The, it's, hold on. That's a big compound, to be honest. That's that's a very big compound. Like, if you have kids, they can they can play right there without going anywhere. Oh yeah! Oh yeah! Oh yeah! Oh yeah! Um, um what's uh, the channel name again? Yes, I missed. Okay, 
this is the channel amazing africa mama land just go and subscribe to uncle jay's channel okay um, somebody said it's him. Um, we're going to uh this is my man who takes care he takes care of the the grounds for us okay that's just Salam alaikum salam. Uh -huh. Um he, he he speaks Swahili. Um okay. so you want uh, say Mama Kaje. <laughs> he doesn't speak do English, I... but we, we we communicate. How do you speak Swahili? No, I don't. Uh, I don't. He, says, he says like Mambo and then you say poa. Okay, but Mambo Poa. Mambo Poa. Mambo yeah. poa. Okay. No, what does that no, mean? No. No, he says mambo, which is like hello, and then you respond by saying poor. Okay, right. meaning I'm good or something. Okay, now somebody older, an older person, you greet them with chigamo. 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 And yeah. the response is marahaba. 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 See, let's yeah. see. Hold on, let me tell you this. Let me tell you this. Let me tell you this. Yeah. You can first, right? And you moved to Tanzania, and right now you showing me a Ghanaian how to speak uh, uh, a Tanzanian language. You see how amazing yeah, it is. Yeah. So, like a maybe a child, let's say a youngster, instead of saying "mambo" to me, they would say uh, "chikamo," and I say "marhaba." Mm-hmm. Chikamo. Yeah. Chikamo. Okay. So we're gonna we're gonna we're gonna move around a little bit more. All right. Okay. Say, okay. Say goodbye. All right. Be safe. Okay. 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 Oh, that garden is it's nice. Mm -hmm. We had some uh, some having to trim some trees around too. Somebody said okay. you are learning the language really good. Well, you know, we're trying, uh you know, it takes time, but uh we're we're getting there. We're getting there. We also uh, we have two kitchens too. This is our second kitchen right here. Okay. Uh, uh, we got a, uh, like a washer. Which we don't do much of, right? A washer. Okay. Washing machine. Fridge. Wow. Microwave, food processor. This is outside. Sink. This is where the stove goes right here, but we're not using it right now, so we took the stove out. But this okay. is our second kitchen. This is the second kitchen right here. Mm -hmm. Oh, somebody said somebody said two months and your Swahili is better than his. <laughs> Come on. We, yeah. look, we tried, man. Come on, I mean, we tried, you know. Um, yeah. you know, and, and we have to learn because if we're gonna be here, we're gonna have to be able to communicate with people, right? Right. Communication is, yeah. is very, you know, important. Yeah. Okay, so we just kind of give you a little, a little tour of uh of our home. Okay. Okay. Please make Forget sure you that. subscribe. Make sure you subscribe to the channel. Um, you know, go to Amazing Africa Mama Land and subscribe. Just go to Amazing Africa Mama Land and subscribe. Amazing Africa Mama Land and subscribe to Uncle Javis YouTube channel. That's like a whole, uh, uh, um, uh, um, how do you call it? That's a huge house, basically. Uh, we're, we're enjoying it. It's kind of showing you around. Mambo! Somebody said, what's the size of that, that house? What do you mean when you say size? We got uh, seven bedrooms, eight baths. It says seven bedrooms. Yeah. Whoa. That's huge. We got a basement too, which you don't find very many of in Africa. We have a basement. Mm hmm So a lot of questions are coming. Somebody said that's the mansion. A lot of questions are coming. Um, you know, a lot of people want to know, you know, all you know, these about the home. I don't know if you really want to answer them, but if yes, I can go ahead and ask them if you want to. Yeah, go ahead and ask. Uh, you know, we, we're, we're, you know, this is no secret, okay? You want to know how okay. much we pay? That's what you want to yes. know? $700 yeah. a month. We pay $700 a month. 
This is not okay. the only one out here like that. So if you want to come get you one, come on, get you one. There's plenty more. Seven hundred dollars a month. So okay, we're not so, like you know these ones that want to keep it a secret or whatever. This is not a secret. Come on to Africa and get you one. They're here. Right. Right. A lot of people keep it secret. A lot of people try to be sneaky with how much they pay and all this stuff. Thank you so much. So just like you heard from Uncle Jarvis, that property right there is seven hundred dollars a month. I don't think you can get it anywhere in the U.S. for that size. So if you want to retire on, you know, if he chooses to retire, please, I suggest, you know, give yourself the opportunity. Go try an African country and retire. You can go to Tanzania. I like their architecture. Very beautiful. You know, they have a, a real uh, um, design. Uh, somebody you said can you can host us. We'll pay for accommodations. Um, you know, can I move with you, Uncle Javis? Somebody said, can I move with you? No, no. no. The answer to that one is no. <laughs> Thank you so much for the super chat, Yana. I really appreciate the love and the support. Thank you so much. Um, somebody said, um, wow, $700 is the life. Um, you know, Seven hundred dollars is is awesome. Like, trust me, you cannot get this type of house for seven hundred dollars in the U.S. It's not possible. You nowhere. Know, it's nowhere in the U.S. Nowhere. You know. So, right. nowhere. just look at how big. Now, this is where um, the groundskeeper he has his own spot right here. That's where he. Okay. Lives. Okay. That's where he. Lives. That's 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 wow. That's a nice. You, it's like a paradise. You have a whole. Oh my goodness, seven hundred bucks. I can. That's like a one bedroom apartment or two bedroom apartment in the U.S. Hey, listen. When we were in uh, New York City, we paid thirty two hundred dollars for a one bedroom apartment. Thirty two hundred dollars. Okay. Wow. Mm -hmm. That's right. New York, Queens. Queensbridge, yeah. yeah. No, Queens, uh, uh, Fresh Meadows. Yeah. I don't know if you know New York, Fresh Meadows. Yeah, I mean, yeah I, I mean, I've been I've been to New York once, but I really got to know uh, more about okay. it. Okay, you see, we have a. This is mm -hmm. another one here. It's like a place. Mm -hmm. Okay, another. It's outside the main house. Mm -hmm. Outside the main house. That's not. We're not in the house right now. We're outside the main house. Okay. Mm hmm Okay. We got one right here. Okay. Got a brother in there sleep. Got mm -hmm. one right here. Another bedroom right here. Wow. Okay. Now, now, now somebody said, which city in Tanzania is this? Is it Dar es Salaam? Moshi. 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 Okay, Moshi. See my beautiful okay. family? Yeah. <laughs> That's Moshi. Okay, and uh, we're back inside now. Okay, uh, we even have a fireplace, you know. What I mean, yeah, yeah. wow, yeah, which is it don't get that cold, so you know, mm -hmm. I guess uh, they just built it. Look at my beautiful daughter, just look at her. So, so let me ask this: When you, now I'm asking this for the for the viewers. When you, um, I'll ask this question when I'm when I'm done. When you when you rented a house, did it come with all the finishing, or you you purchased everything? No, no, it came furnished. It came fully furnished. Um, you know, we added some of our own personal things to it, but uh, it came fully furnished. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So yeah, this. Um, is the this this was a finished property, seven hundred dollars a month, as you could see, and um, you know that's that's beautiful. And he said there's a lot out there that you can basically rent and do the same. You know, you can basically rent and do the same. He has done it, you know, and he's showing you. This is not a fairy tale. This is not somebody sitting a place and telling you how it is. This is somebody actually on the ground doing it, and he's telling you it's possible. So if you have the same goal, unless you you know you don't you don't have you know that type of goal or plan to actually do it, but if you do have it, you know this is a prime example of what you can basically do. 
Yeah, we're in the basement right now. This okay. is the basement. We're not using it, but this is the basement. Okay, I'm sure you hear the echo, right? Yep. Yeah, that's the, that's the basement, and not too many homes here have basements. Basement. Okay, this was basement. really well planned and built. Say it again. I said this house was really well planned and built. Oh, it's they built, man. I mean, it has, it, it has, it has, it has like. I mean, look at this. Okay, so stone, wow. stone, stone. Okay, and then. Mm -hmm. So somebody said, "How can I donate to your mission?" Like I said, go to um, "Living My Best Life." If you really want to donate, go to "Living My Best Life in Ghana" at gmail.com, and they'll guide you through the donation process. So. Please go ahead and support his foundation. He's doing an amazing job. Now, you know, somebody said, how is the medical or healthcare in Tanzania? Since you've been there for two months, how would you say the healthcare in Tanzania is? It's very good. As a matter of fact, uh, I can give you two, two things that happened that I had to actually use the facility. Um, <laughs> you know, uh, I was walking around with no shoes on, you know, mm -hmm. and which is something that I rarely do uh, back in the United States. And I bumped my big toe, man, and it swelled up. So I had to go to the emergency room. Mm -hmm. um, we went to the emergency room. We check in. There's like about 20 people sitting there. Mm -hmm. And they put me in front of everybody. They said, you are guests in our country, and we want to make sure that you're very welcome. So they let me mm -hmm. go in front of everybody. Uh, the doctor, he, he sent me for x-ray of the toe, took a blood test, uh, gave me some ointment, and I only paid 20 U.S. dollars for that, 20 U.S. dollars. <laughs> no, there no insurance now, no cash. So, so, so but you bump. You went to the hospital and yeah. they said, you know what, you, you know, we want you to feel comfortable in our country. Therefore, we will take care of you. They treated you everything and you yeah. paid just $20. 20 U.S. dollars. That's what I paid. What's equivalent to, of course, you know, using Tanzanian shillings, it equal out to less than less than 20 U.S. dollars for everything. For the x-ray, the blood test, seeing the doctor. Mm hmm. And the ointment, twenty dollars. Okay. Twenty dollars. Now my wife, wow. my wife broke her veneer, mm -hmm. and she had to go and um, go to the dentist and 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 get it fixed. And um, I can't remember how much it was, but it wasn't that much. You know, same thing. Uh, when mm -hmm. she went in, they said, um, "You're an African American. You you you're visiting this country." Mm -hmm. And they said, okay. And 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 she was first first priority. Mm -hmm. As a as a visitor, as a visitor, to show you that you are welcome here, mm -hmm. they they make sure that you're taken care of and you're taken care of first. So wow. Wow. So so let me let me uh, somebody ask a question. Would you ever return back to the US? Well, that's a good question. Um, I would say um, if I have to, you know, for for business reasons or, you know, if okay. I have to sign something or something like that, but I don't want to go and visit. Um, if somebody passed, I'll send them some flowers because okay. me being there, what is, what is me being there going to do? I can't bring you back. So I just send you some flowers and that's it. Now my wife has to go back to take care of businesses, um, mm -hmm. and and I said, "You go ahead, baby. I'm not going." Mm -hmm. So you going, but right now I have no plans, no plans. But if I have to, like I said, I will. But uh, I don't plan on it. No. <laughs> yeah. Somebody said, "I doubt he's ever going back to the U.S." <laughs> uh, 
Uh, I'm going to so, try not to. Like I said, I'm going to try not to. When my wife said she had to go and do this and do that, and she had to be there, I said, you mm -hmm. go ahead. I'm not going with you. No. Mm -hmm. Yana said, mm -hmm. I'm on my way and I'm not coming back. Um, That's right. Yeah. Um, Medicare services sounds very good. Um, yeah, and inexpensive, see. Uh, I was paying like almost $400 a month just for insurance in mm -hmm. U.S. Just for insurance. $400 a month. For Medicare insurance? Yes, sir. $400 wow. a month. That's right. Wow. And my, wife, my wife was paying $200, so add that together. $600 a month just for insurance for us. Wow. And then when you get when you get to the doctor, you still got to pay your copay. You get your medication, you got to pay your copay on that. Ooh. Plus $600 a month. That's how much we're paying. So imagine, now let me ask you this. If you, have, let's say you bumped your feet in the U.S. and you took the same injury to a hospital in the U.S., how much do you think you would, you would have paid? Well, with my insurance now, mm -hmm. I would pay $50 because of my insurance. That's my copay. If I go to emergency room or, or something like that, the copay is $50. I just pay the copay, which is $50. Mm-hmm. Which is thirty dollars wow. more than I paid. Not yeah. to mention the six hundred a month now. The only reason and, why I'm only paying fifty dollars is because I paid the six hundred a month. Yes, that's and guess what? In Tanzania, you don't pay health insurance. You just pay. So no. basically, you save yourself over eight hundred dollars. Yes, sir. That's right. That's right. Even uh, we talk about Medicare, which is for seniors, right? It's a hundred. Mm -hmm. I think one hundred forty-five dollars a month. Hundred forty five dollars a month. Yeah. Wow. And there's certain there's certain criteria that go with that. But see what I had, I had Medicare mm -hmm. and I had insurance from my prior employer. Mm -hmm. And that's how it equal to four hundred dollars a month for just for me. I didn't in order to add my wife on there. It would have been eight hundred dollars. Mm -hmm. So we just say we let her get her separate. That saved us two hundred right there. I pay four hundred, mm -hmm. pay two six hundred dollars a month just for insurance. Ooh. Yeah, yeah. Ooh. So wow. Fact, one of her medications, one of her asthma medication, was four hundred dollars for a ninety day supply. Four hundred dollars. Man. Yeah. So yeah. let me ask somebody asked this question. Uh, somebody said, yes, expensive plus copay. Um yeah. somebody said, you know, plus Medicare only pays 80% of the bill. Um, you know, the healthcare industry here in the state is designed to keep you sick. I'm a nurse in oncology, or you know, I don't know what that is, but you know, and <laughs> Mm hmm. Golden Hat said, Golden Hat, thank you so much for the support. I appreciate, you know, the super chat. Thank you so much. She said, I want to come to Africa, but I don't want to come alone. You know, what would be your advice for her? She wants to travel or come to Africa, but she doesn't want to do it alone. OK, um, depending on what country you're going to. OK. If you come in here, we have mm -hmm. a process that my, my son he can track the plane and then let's let's say when you leave New York, you call and say, hey, Uncle Jarvis, I'm leaving New York right now. I'm boarding. OK. Mm -hmm. And when you mm -hmm. get to Qatar, you say, mm -hmm. Uncle Jay, I just landed in Qatar. OK. Mm -hmm. Six hour later. You go get mm -hmm. some rest. There's a matter of fact, there's a they have a room that just for females where okay. they can rest. No males in this room, just female. And you okay. just rest. You know, after the six hour layover, you say, Uncle Jay, hey, I'm leaving Qatar. I'm headed to Mount Kilimanjaro. OK, when you get to Kilimanjaro, we'll be there waiting for you. See? OK, that's the security that we're trying to to help people yeah. with, you know, so we yeah. can track you. To, mm -hmm. If there's any problem, we'll be able to 
you know, help you out on that. Now, mm -hmm. let's say you're going to Ghana. Well, we'll a representative somewhere, somebody in Ghana can help you. That's how mm -hmm. we have to do it to make sure that our single females are safe mm -hmm. when traveling. Mm -hmm. and, and we can do this. We can do it. Yep. We can do so, it. So based on, now let me, let me tell you this. Based on what you just told me, right? Based on what you just told me, basically, if you are interested, we can come out with a type of system that can basically um, be, you know, have an online presence where if somebody decides to move to Tanzania, Ghana, Gambia, yeah. Kenya, yeah. you know, we can have sources and, you know, other connect over there where that, you know, they can feel safe and they will guide them through the process of, you know, settling in that African country. You know, we can work on something like a, a network that will make it easier. If somebody's trying to move to Tanzania, Gambia, you know, we can have that system set up so people can just go through that system and it, it will be basically easier for them to move. Here's another thing we can like, you know, organize something like, let's say, you put it out thank there, say, are there any other? Uh, sure. Oh, mm -hmm. uh, thank you so much, uh, uh, my, uh, Mary Johnson. Thank you so much for the super chat. Yeah, go ahead. Okay. We, we'll reach out. Let's say we put it out here and say, are there any other uh, single females traveling? And then maybe you guys try to travel together. Mm -hmm. You know, uh, mm -hmm. maybe that that's another thought, you know. Um but that's something that we have to really work on, man. Because uh, there are a lot of females that they want to travel, but they're afraid. You know, even you got couples that are afraid to travel. You know, but yeah. When you know that, especially when you know you got somebody on the other end waiting on you. See, when you get to this country that you've never been before, you don't know nobody. When you see somebody that you know, that's gonna make you feel better. Yeah, and very secure. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. So we, my, yeah. Mm -hmm. Did you see the one uh, with Living My Best Life in Ghana when we picked up a couple at the airport? No, I didn't see. Okay. Okay. We picked up a couple Friday but morning. You told, you told me about yeah, it. Morning. Yeah, we picked them up. Uh, and uh, we, we, we were live on uh, Living My Best Life in Ghana when we picked them up. Uh, mm -hmm. A man and his wife. And uh, we picked them up, brought them to exchange money, uh, got their card and everything, took them to the Airbnb and uh, made sure they were safe. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Somebody said, yes. Yeah. Somebody said, yes, they saw, they saw okay. it. Okay. Um, okay. Um, yeah. yeah. And then this is what, you know, what the woman was suggesting as well. Uh, she's saying, please also, a place to stay is very important because of them come and they rip them off. You know, basically, she's trying to say, you know, if you can like places for people to stay, because, you know, most people come in and they get overcharged or overpriced when they're trying to figure it out themselves. Well, we've been helping people with that, but uh, there are Airbnb here that are like $25, $30, nice ones. Yes. Okay. Okay. So they're out there. Um, we have a couple of them that we that we recommend. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. 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 So basically, they can get on Airbnb for twenty dollars. You know, 20, and twenty five. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Now, if you and want then, um, like mm -hmm. living at home with somebody, you can get one of those for like maybe ten or fifteen dollars. But I mean, like a a nice one bedroom. Uh, you know, with shower and everything, uh, twenty five bucks. Mm -hmm. yeah. Which includes breakfast too. Yeah, or this this can be another suggestion too. A family of four or five can come together, move. You know, rent a place like yours, big like this. You know, really? and they can basically split their rent. That will even be cheaper. You know, and just leave. You see what I'm saying? For a year or yeah. two, and figure out the system out. Yeah, there, there are a lot of uh, affordable housing here. Um, mm -hmm. You know, I mean, they're just taking advantage of us in America, man. You make the money, but they take it all back. Back. So what good, what good is that doing you? 
Mm -hmm. you, you can come here. You can come here and build your house. When you get through building that house, you don't owe nobody. Mm -hmm. You don't have to pay tax. In America, you pay your house off. You still have to pay tax. Taxes. That's don't what pay I was tax. saying. Don't pay the tax and see what happens. Mm -hmm. You won't That's pay that house long if you don't pay the tax. <laughs> so, so it's not really yeah. your house. Mm -hmm. If you still have to pay taxes, it's not really your house. Mm -hmm. But here, you build your house, you get through building it, pay for it, you don't owe nobody. Now, mm -hmm. somebody asked, could you buy a house? Uh, yes, but now, I want to say this. In mm -hmm. order to purchase in order to purchase land in Tanz Tanzania, Tanzania, you have to be melanated. White people cannot buy land here. Wow. I'll repeat that. I'll hold repeat, on. That. Hold I'll on, repeat hold on. it. Hold on, hold on, hold on. What? Let's, let, let's, let me put a question there. Uh, uh, okay. Can, uh, who can purchase, let me put it there, land in Tanzania? I'm putting it there so people can basically um now who can purchase land in tanzania since you've been there for two months based on your uh, uh, um, experience and information who can purchase land in tanzania melanated people okay i wish my son was here he's in arusha okay if you're white you cannot buy land in tanzania you cannot you can hold on, rent. Hold on. Hold on. So if I'm from I'm from France, I'm from Germany, I'm from Israel. Mm -hmm. I have mm -hmm. I have twenty million dollars, and I want to buy mm -hmm. your, Mr. Jarvis' house. As long as I'm white, I cannot buy that house. Is that what you're saying? The only way you can get it, you'd have to get a Tanzanian to get it for you. No, you can't get it. You can't. Wow, buy it. that's amazing. You can rent it. You can rent it, but you can't buy it. And with rent. Let me tell you about rent. Okay, if you're renting and you do something like to a Tanzanian, mm -hmm. in some cases, they I, they put people out, you got 24 hours and you're out of this country. You're out of here. 24 mm -hmm. hours, you got to leave just like that. Ain't nobody concerned about your lease, how many months you got left. You got 24 hours to be out of here. That's wow. how they do it. I hope they can, you know, uh, uh, um, 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 apply this throughout, especially West Africa, um, you know, Ghana, Gambia, you know, so we can, you know, learn how to protect. Uh, I mean, in, in Ghana, you know, foreigners can, you know, whether he's white, black, yellow, they say you can, you know, you cannot own it, but you can have it for 50 years, you know. But it's crazy how Tanzania just, you you can't you can't even have it. You you can only no, rent. You can't. You can't. Oh. You can't. There 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 are a few Indians, um, Pakistanians, a few. Okay. But I'm not sure if they fall in that category. I'm not really sure. But their skin is dark darker than mine. For sure. <laughs> uh, really yeah. sure. Like I said, I'm not really sure if they they qualify or not. But there are a few of them. But they blend in just like everybody else. Like. Okay. We were out at a bar, and there was a couple of Indians in there, and everybody else was black. But they was partying with everybody else. You have 120 mm -hmm. tribes here, too. 120. Mm -hmm. Everybody wow. get along. Everybody respect each other. Wow. So in saying, that, in saying that, okay, the official language is, what do you call it? Uh, so I somebody help me. Swahili, okay. Yeah. But with 120 tribes, that's 120 more different languages. You can <laughs> yeah. speak Swahili, but you know you're gonna speak your tribe, your tribal language too. Mm -hmm. So that's how many languages you have, and, and that's how many different people have to get they get along with each other. Everybody mm -hmm. live together and get along with each other. You're Shaga, and this one is another tribe, uh the uh um, you know, just there's so many different ones, so many different ones, man. I, I can't, I can't begin to name them all. But everybody okay. gets along in harmony. Everybody work together, no problem. I was telling you about the cleanliness of this town too. 
It's super clean. Mm -hmm. You won't see a piece of paper uh, or a, a bottle or a can, you know, walking downtown Moshe. You won't see that. You'll see wow. waste baskets everywhere. You see waste baskets everywhere, but you won't see any trash. Now, if you're caught dropping trash, cigarette butts or whatever, fifty dollar fine. What's equivalent to fifty dollars if you get mm -hmm. caught doing it? That's why nobody does it. It's super I wish, clean. Man. Super I wish clean. they can, I wish they can implicate this same thing in Ghana because one of the biggest problems in Accra is is trash. Right. You know, and you know, like the, the the what do you call the thing? I guess the the gully of where the water goes through, you know? Oh uh, yeah, the, 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 the goddess the water. Okay. They they clean them on a daily basis. Wow. With the the city, people that work for the city, they wear like these little uh orange vests mm -hmm. and they clean them every day. They clean them every day. Every day. See now, 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 you, now, now. I'm a Ghanaian, but you, you are really enticing me to Man, to, really, to really try out uh, East Africa or Tanzania because um, yeah. I have I have this type of vision of you know trying to basically own land in another African country just to say you know we are one people and we can be everywhere. We are not just you know yeah restricted to be just Ghanaian or Nigerian, but Tanzania sounds really convincing, you know, okay. based on how uh, uh, I can only speak for this country because this is the only African country I've ever been to. Uh, mm -hmm. However, as I said before, we're going to, my wife reminds me all the time, don't get too tied up in this stuff now. You promised, you said we was going to travel around now, you know, <laughs> so don't forget. So, you yeah. know, I, I can't get too tied up in stuff because I have to take her to some other countries, you know. Yeah. Now, let me ask you this. Um, people say there's a lot of Chinese people in Africa. Chinese are taking over Africa. So far, mm -hmm. being there for two months. Now, before I, I, you know, let me let me say this. Thank you so much, Rooted in Royalty. Uh, that's that's my sister right there. She's trying to move to Ghana and she's she's not there yet, but she's really speaking the language. And I'm. You know, I'm really impressed how she's really getting along with the Ghanaian language. Uh, you can check out her channel out. She's an amazing sister. But um, let me end this. How, you know, being there for two months, you know, have you, you know, how's your experience with Chinese in Africa and all that stuff, being there for two months? Okay. Um, since I've been here, mm -hmm. I've only saw... Two Chinese since I've been here for two months. Matter of fact, um, I can count the white people I've seen too. Probably about hmm. maybe fifteen, maybe okay. fifteen. Yeah. Okay. But I've only saw two Chinese mm -hmm. since I've been here. Since I've been here. Wow. But this country a is a little different from some of those other countries now. They got yeah. strict laws on, on stuff, man. They're not just letting you come in here and, and do anything you want to here. No, no, they don't play that. Mm -mm. Mm -hmm. You know, do you know you have to get permission to cut down a tree? You cannot cut down a tree without permission from the government. You could trim wow. it, but you cannot cut it down without getting permission on your property. On your wow. property. You cannot cut the tree down. You could trim it, but you can't just cut it down. No. See, 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 we need this. We need this in my country. And not just in my country. We need these laws in West Africa because it looks like in West Africa, we have too much freedom that sometimes we abuse it. Because mm -hmm. trust me, you can do whatever you, you want to do with your piece of land in, in Ghana. You know, it's it's just like I hear. I hear. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Wow. Wow. That's yeah, amazing. We, mm -hmm. we did some we did some tree trimming around here, but mm -hmm. we can't cut it down. Can't you can mm -hmm. cut the branches, uh, but you cannot cut the tree down. That's right. Mm -hmm. that, that's that's some good laws right there that we you know mm -hmm. we need to apply it. Um, somebody said, um, you know, thank you so much, brother. Thank you so much. 
um you know i think this brother is from tanzania he said please karibu sana tanzania you are most welcome back home again brothers and sisters um uh everywhere i go man everywhere i go all i hear is karibu karibu welcome 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 and they say karibu sana you're welcome so much you're mm -hmm. welcome so much all the time all the time and they sometimes they come i go in the supermarket right i make mm -hmm. my little purchases and everything and after i after i pay and everything the the cashier said excuse me brother can i take a picture with you I'm like sure you know mm -hmm. wow, this is great you know mm -hmm. yeah they want to take a picture with the american brother you know they're <laughs> glad we're here they're glad mm -hmm. we're here yeah when we dropped the brothers and the sister off at the uh airbnb mm -hmm. the guy at the uh, airbnb he's like man i'm glad to see you guys coming home i'm glad to see you guys coming home yeah okay yeah. So, so that that's another question from Anna. I think this question is very important as well. You know, um, she said, "What did you do with all your household belongings? Did you store them, sell them? You know, if you own a home, did you rent out or sell it? Because trust me, one of the biggest issue when it comes to relocating to the African continent for most people is how do we get rid of all our belongings? Okay. Now, what we did was. Um we the apartment that we had in new york my my son is mm -hmm. there and mm -hmm. uh we left everything in the apartment you know mm -hmm. and he's there right now so so that's what we're doing now my wife is going to go back and she's going to get some some personal items and we're not going to try to ship no furniture or nothing like that no cars mm -hmm. we're not doing that uh anything mm -hmm. we need we're going to purchase right here we're not going to be thank trying to pay, pay thank you so much there. thank you so much because uh, i have i keep recommending this same process i said don't, don't stress yourself trying to ship furniture trying to ship all this but come on man you, if you can sell it go ahead and sell them and take the money you get the best furniture in that yeah. african yeah. country and then you, you want you want something different too i mean you want some you know like like, 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 look at this. This is our furniture, you know. Yeah, I mean, that's why different. I wanna, why would I want to bring my furniture from from New York? I mean, I got this, and this is uh, in the you know the courtyard, you yeah. know. So, yeah, I'm going to show you uh, something that we purchased. Um, from the guy at the Airbnb. Um, mm -hmm. He makes uh, custom furniture. Mm -hmm. And uh, we, we purchased a piece from him. Uh, mm -hmm. We're going to bring it out and show you. This is my little man cave here. Okay. Okay. Let's see. You see the chair? Yeah, bring it down a little bit. Okay. Okay. I've seen it. I've seen it. Go, go skin. Go skin. Yeah, goat skin. Yeah, goat skin. And, and, and this is real leather. It it will it will be there for a long period of time. Yeah. Um, we used to call it. I forget how they call it in Ghana, but we we used to call it. This is very predominant in in West Africa as well. Okay, now it's we. Really we, we I told you we don't keep secrets. We're yeah. not keeping secrets. Okay, this chair this chair costs twenty five dollars. Mm hmm. Twenty-five dollars. So you can get a chair like this for twenty-five dollars. Uh, handmade goat skin. Um, you know, wood from here. Mm -hmm. So I'd rather have this than the chair from New York. Mm -hmm. So you know, we're yeah, gonna. So we're I, gonna... Mm -hmm. Go ahead. I'm I sorry. Keep, yeah. Uh, uh, um. I keep. Um. I keep telling people. I said, well. If you want to move and you want the you know the the process to go smooth for you, don't try to make things cumbersome. You know by trying to ship, you know all your, your the stuff. Like why would you want to ship a furniture to Ghana or you know Tanzania when you can get it from there? As long as it you know the shipping money and all that stuff, you could save all that money. 
You see what I'm saying? You can stay a bit. Yeah, keep it alone. The shipping yeah. alone gonna kill you, man. Yeah. yeah. And and a vehicle, you bring a vehicle, man. You you better be ready to you know give up <laughs> some cash. <laughs> I keep telling people, but they yeah. will not let me out to they go through the struggle and now they start making YouTube video talking about how it, it's so difficult to do this in Africa. But but we keep telling people don't do it, but still, you know, some people are like hey, I want to ship my vehicle. I want to do this until they face some type of challenges and they make a, they start complaining about the country. Okay, save that money and buy you a vehicle. Buy mm -hmm. your vehicle, sell the one you got there. Sell the one you got there. Use that money plus the money you was going to use to ship it over here and buy you a vehicle. Mm -hmm. you know? that, that, that's better, you know? You mm -hmm. don't just have to have that vehicle and then buy you another one. Yeah. And, yeah. um, you know they do right hand drive over here too now. Yeah. Um, uh, you know uh, that right. Yeah. Right hand right hand drive. Mm -hmm. Like like you know, like in England, right? Mm-hmm. That's you that's I that think car, like, like, like like they do in Jamaica. Mm-hmm. I don't drive like but I can't I don't drive. <laughs> I, you get I, I can't I can't get it, you know. Yeah. I just can't get it, man. I'm used to the I'm used to the driving in America. You know, I, I just yeah. And it, I, I won't drive here. Nah, I won't. Maybe yeah. I, maybe I'll, I'll I'll change my mind later. But right now, I don't drive. No. Yeah, I mean, it, 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 don't drive if you're not used to that whole. No, uh, uh, yeah. And the motorcycles cutting in and out of traffic, man. I told mm -hmm. my wife, I drive. I knocked the motorcycle <laughs> out the first day. <laughs> Where they they dug in and out. If you if it's an inch, they're gonna try to get it. Mm -hmm. I, I, I can't drive here, man. Nah. Yeah, yeah. And I don't have to. I, I can walk. I can, everywhere I want to go, I can walk. And then my mm -hmm. son, he got a vehicle, you know. So, you know, if I want to go somewhere in a vehicle, he'll take me. Mm -hmm. but I'm not driving though. Nah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So. Um, some doing Gavi TV say it don't make any sense to bring any furniture from America when you can get custom made African yeah. furniture. Um, nice, man. Nice yeah. furniture. Yeah. Yep. And why would you even ship your vehicle? Like, uh, um, you know, all the paperwork you got to do. Oh my goodness. I mean, unless you are so rich, you want to ship your gin wagon, yeah. Lamborghini, yeah. Yeah. you know. Mercedes yeah. Benz, you know, then yeah, you know, nobody trying to stop that. But <laughs> if you my if you car, know. man, my car, my car is a 78 Buick Electra 225. Deuce in a mm -hmm. quarter for y'all that know about that. Deuce in a quarter. 78 <laughs> with 90,000 mm -hmm. miles on it. I would have mm -hmm. loved to brought it here, but I'd have to pay too much, you know? Yeah. So mm -hmm. I gave it to my brother. No, mm -hmm. so that's that. Somebody, well, what's the channel? What's your channel's name? Is um, amazing, amazing, Africa Mama, Land. Mama Land, amazing Africa Mama Land. So that's 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 his channel. That's Uncle Javis' channel. Amazing Africa Mama Land. Go subscribe. Go subscribe. Uh, uh, um, yeah, we gotta put some content. Hey, I wanted to tell you something too, man. Uh, this is this is something that most people wouldn't share with you, but I'm going to share. I share because I want I want everybody to know the real truth. Okay. Okay. Now we were coming back from Arusha, and uh, my son he kept wanting me to try this homemade mm -hmm. brew they make. It's, mm -hmm. uh, they make it out of banana and mm -hmm. millet. Okay. It's like homemade. Homemade beer, mm -hmm. and and we brought it home, man. And he fixed me a nice glass of it, and I tried it. And brother, I was sick for three days. Mm -hmm. I was sick for three days. I'll never do that again. Never. And this I don't is it. Homemade brew, man. Uh uh. My let stomach wasn't ready you. for it. But let, let me let me tell you this. Um, you know, I do trips to Ghana, right? Right. I do trips to Ghana. And most of the times, 
on the trip, on the group trip, uh, right. when we go out to eat, we, me, my tour guide, and the driver, we uh, we eat certain foods, right? And right. most of the times, the people on the trip like, why do you guys always want to eat, you know, your different meal, and you don't want us to eat the same food? I'm like, guess what? The stomach is not built for this food. I don't want you trying this food because <laughs> you'll be going to the bathroom. <laughs> you know, you and you don't understand. I don't have a problem with the food, see. Mm -hmm. It was just that that homemade beer, man. Uh, uh, my stomach wasn't ready for it, man. I mean, you said, is it a beer? Is it a beer? beer? Homemade beer. Yeah, homemade beer. That's what it don't was. Try it. Don't homemade try it. beer. I no, did. Now you tell me. I wish you had told me that earlier. No, don't try. Don't try. I tried. I tried. It's not for you. Don't try it, man. I was sick, man. I had fever and everything, yeah. man. Don't try Ooh. it. I'll never do that again. Man. Yeah, I, I. Yeah, don't try. It. It's it's really hard. It, it's really strong. Yeah. And, um, no, don't try it. That's what I'm saying. <laughs> I yeah. tell everybody, so, else, man, don't, don't mess with the homemade brew. Now leave that alone. Mm -hmm. That's but I was in food. Now the mm -hmm. food here, street mm -hmm. food and stuff like that, no problem, mm -hmm. man. No problem at all. Okay. All the food is good, uh, and everybody they're so clean. Mm -hmm. They're clean. You know, like they may not have grass, but they're gonna make sure that 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 dirt gonna be nice and and manicured and everything and even they may be poor, but they're super clean, mm -hmm. super clean. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, 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 um, I don't know in, in Ghana. In, <laughs> in Ghana, <laughs> we have yeah. something called palm wine, right? Palm yeah. wine. Right. And, and most people, when I take people on the trips to Ghana, right. they want to try. It. They are, can I yeah. try? It? I'm like, hold on, hold on. Don't be so quick to try this local drink because trust yeah, me yeah. it will yeah. mess up how much you have yeah. <laughs> try it <laughs> yeah. about to, I, i've heard of the palm wine and i want to try it but i think i better i'll leave that alone man don't, don't they try got some wine here, though. Uh, there's some wine here uh actually made locally uh mm -hmm. it's called emaji mm -hmm. man tastes good but it is so strong man they come in like personal bottles, right? You know, mm -hmm. just one. You know, you know, I'm talking about just the one for your personal self. Not, yeah, yeah, not yeah. A, yeah. I say one of them. Mm -hmm. You'd be, but if you drink three, they might have to carry you out. That's how strong mm -hmm. it is. It's strong. Okay, that's another question coming. How can you avoid getting malaria? Well, they have mosquitoes here, but they don't carry malaria. The ones. In this area. Now, when you get to like Dar es Salaam and places like that and Zanzibar, mm -hmm. they do have um, mosquitoes that have malaria. But the mosquitoes here in this area, they do not have malaria. Okay. Okay. I see. Uh, 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 <laughs> Somebody let me, said. Let me, let me, uh, 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 this myth on malaria. If you catch mm -hmm. malaria, it's not a death sentence, okay? It's not a death sentence. It's like catching mm -hmm. the flu or something like that. You know, you just mm -hmm. have to recuperate. That's all. You ain't going to die or nothing like that. You know? But mm -hmm. I have to tell you, man, when I was uh, back home, I was thinking if you catch malaria, you're going to die. Yeah. Now, yeah. people do die from it now. People do die from it, but the chances of you die from it are very slim. Mm -hmm. Very slim. Yeah. As mm -hmm. a matter of fact, before I left, I, I bought uh, the malaria uh, pills. I haven't taken them, but I have them. Mm -hmm. I got them from my doctor before I left. And, yeah. and guess what? Guess what? The malaria drugs in, in Tanzania is way better and stronger than the one you got from the U.S. Okay. Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, yeah. uh, something else. They don't require yellow fever shot here either. So yeah. that's just for, just for the information. Somebody might want to know. They do not require a yellow fever shot. Matter of fact, the countries that do, you have to tell them like, "Hey, I'm allergic to it, whatever." You know, you can make yeah. it. You know, yeah, you can get by. Yeah, you can. You, you know can. what? You know what I didn't know? 
Mm-hmm. You know where you have to go and get a, a yellow fever shot in the U.S.? Do you know where you have to go get the shot at? Where? You have to go through a governmental agency. Yeah. Your, your doctor can't give you a yellow fever shot. You have to go to a governmental agency to get that shot. Mm-hmm. And it's, I want to say, I think it's $300 for the shot. And you can get it even at the airport. How much? Three hundred. In Ghana, if you get it at the airport, it's it's like twenty five bucks. Okay, okay. But if you yeah. get in the U.S., it's three hundred dollars. Yeah. Three hundred. Yeah. Yeah, it's three hundred dollars. Now, once again, this is for information. I know there's a place in Colombia that you can get it for free. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So. Yeah, but um. Um, 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 hold on. Let me, let me get some questions here. Somebody said, okay, you, I think you already answered this question. Where in Tanzania does he live? He live in, you Moshe. said, Moshe. Moshe. M-O-S-I-E. I'm sorry. M-O-S-I. Google it. M-O-S-I. Moshe. Moshe. Right. Uh, maybe about two hours from Arusha. Okay. Okay. No, no, they left out the you left out the uh, H. M O S H. Okay, Moshi. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Um, bring in more questions if you have any question and um if you haven't smashed the like button, you can go ahead and do it. And um amazing Africa Mama Land is Uncle Jarvis um YouTube channel that you can go and subscribe to his channel um you know so we're gonna begin putting up uh putting up content real soon Mm -hmm. um i would have had some up if i hadn't tried that uh that (laughs) that that, that drink (laughs) yeah and uh her sister said i want to try that palm wine i'm like well you know i I want to taste that palm wine but yeah you can go ahead and taste it but just be careful because if your stomach is not built to take that Trust me, it, it will make you go to the bathroom. Like, yeah, you know, man. Oh, man. You know, uh, we have to, uh, I sent somebody to the pharmacy to get something for me. And, uh, mm-hmm. you know, the pharmacy, uh, he sent something and uh, it helped. Uh, I said, it took me about three days to get over it. Okay. Someone said, um, what, did you take any shot before you, you, you know, you moved, you moved to Tanzania? I did. Uh, trying to think which one it was. Uh, I took a couple. I took a tetanus and I can't remember, man. I, I, t- I did take a couple of them. I requested to take them. Uh, okay. But, but, but I did not take the yellow fever. Okay. Uh, that one I didn't take. No, no. Okay. Uh, now, now, uh, um, Whitney wants to know, did you save any specific amount of money before making the move? No, nah, not really. Not really. We came with what we had and uh, and we made it work, you know. Uh, and that's the other thing, man. Uh, you saving, you know, don't wait until next month, next year, whatever. It's never going to come. So, you know, you just have to go and make that move, man. Uh, you know, things will work out. Just get on the ground, and I guarantee you, things gonna work out, man. You're not gonna be homeless. You're not okay. gonna be homeless. You're not gonna be hungry either, because <laughs> you, you can just walk in the field and see uh, bananas, uh, just all kind of fruit. You know, mm-hmm. don't belong to nobody. It's just a vacant land full of fruit trees. So mm-hmm. you're not gonna be hungry. So, and food is cheap too. Food is very cheap. Uh, uh, I keep stressing that since I have my son and my daughter, it makes things a lot easier for me. You know, the, mm-hmm. the language barrier and uh, attempting to purchase items in the, in the market. You know, mm-hmm. they, they, they will up the price on you when they, when they hear you speaking that that American you know, mm-hmm. English. They're going to up the price on you. But if you got a, a, a local to, to get it for you, it'll be a lot cheaper. Mm-hmm. It'll be a lot okay. cheaper. And, I told you this before. I don't like the fact that some people look at us as a meal ticket or something like that. Like, like he's American, so he's rich. Yeah, you know, it's Come a on, perception. Man. It's a That's perception. Yeah, everyone think 
you know, you from America, you got money. Right. And that's not the case. However, you know, you got some some so-called African-Americans that don't even have um, enough money to buy a ticket to even get here. <laughs> yeah. They so have to like save money. They have to save money to buy the ticket. This is a fact, man. This is not something, you know, I'll tell you something that I know. The other thing is a lot of us don't have passports. Okay. You can't travel without a passport, mm -hmm. but most of African Americans don't have a passport because they ain't going nowhere. So why do they need a passport? First thing mm -hmm. you got to do, you have to get your passport. You have to. Okay. And questions. Okay. I had a brother ask me, mm -hmm. could he buy a fan in Tanzania? <laughs> See, that's what it is. He it's asked funny. me, could he buy a fan? Come on, man. Come on, man. Where Come on. Where do you man. think we at? Come on. You think that's... we live in the trees? Come, Come on. on. Man. <laughs> and also, there's air I got air conditioning in every room in my house, including the kitchen. I got air conditioning. Mm -hmm. Air conditioning in every room. Is it, I, 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 this is it. I, I, you can get everything you need here. Everything you need. I do. Wake up, man. YouTube live. Come on. Yes. See, see, I have I have really bypassed those questions. Tanzanian yes, brother. Uh, he's vis visiting from Norway. Say hello. hello. Visiting his home. <laughs> How hello, you doing? I said hello. I'm good, man. How are you? I'm I'm fine. I'm fine. You know, this is our yeah. uncle. And um, you know, we appreciate you for taking care of him. We really okay, appreciate you. He's, he's my uncle too now. <laughs> yeah, we and we really appreciate the support. We hang out together, man. I told him, man, I can't be going with you every night, man. I say my wife's gonna get mad. Said, you know, like, I can go with you a couple of nights, man, but that's not every night. <laughs> right. You know right. how we do it in Africa, right? <laughs> yeah. yeah. Yes. I'm from so Ghana. He's, he's from Ghana. You're from Ghana. Yeah, but he's living in the yeah. uh, state. Yeah. All right, all right. Yeah. All right. yeah. Uh -huh. yeah. yeah. So, yeah. you ever been to Ghana? To oh, um, September next year. Oh, September next year. Listen, okay. we we gotta we gotta promote his. Uh, he, he's building a uh, a fourplex for. Okay. Two bedroom apartments, Airbnb. They're brand new. They're gonna be ready December first. Right? Yes. Okay. Yeah, December first. They'll be ready. Let yeah. me know. So, and um, you know, we we'll do that. We 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 we'll open it up. Right. Okay. Right. Nice. I'll, I'll I'll give that all the picture to Uncle uh, Jarvis so he can uh, send it to you. So you can help me promote it. <laughs> okay. No problem. Okay, we so here for. What you say? Take take to the That's all, okay. I I appreciate it. Thank you very much. You are welcome. Thanks. Listen, listen. Okay. He's going. Okay. You want? You, you have a question for him? Yeah. You got a no, question for him? Wanted, no, I just wanted to say, as long as he's taking care of you, we, we got him. Uh, we'll do the promotion for him. Yes, yeah. of course, of course, man, of course. Okay. Okay. No problem. Right. Right. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. We 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 working together. Yeah, we working together, man. And uh, you know, people okay. come in. Uh, we send them to him. You know. Um, yeah. We, we're, you know. We're partnering this, you know. Yeah. Mm -hmm. okay. So as, as long as as long as he he got you, we'll do the marketing for free. You know, we'll just okay. do it. For, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. And see, that's how we do, man. We work together. Okay. This brother, mm -hmm. he lives in Norway. Um, mm -hmm. His sister called me and said, "My brother's coming. Could you let him stay in one of your one of your outsides?" I said, "Sure, man. That's no problem." Mm -hmm. He got here like midnight. We stayed up because we wanted to meet this brother to see who's going to mm -hmm. be living in my home, right? And we mm -hmm. met him. Uh, and look, we've been we buddies ever since, man. We yeah, we hang out. Yeah, we hang out together. Yeah, and, and my son too. You know, we yeah. So that's how we do it here, you know. Yeah. But I can tell you, I can tell you, in America, this never would happen, man. You would nobody mm -hmm. that I don't know is coming to live in my house. Nah, no, no, never, never. never. Never, 
never. But here we do right. things a little different. We have to trust mm -hmm. each other, you know? Mm -hmm. you know. So, you know, and that's how it is. You know, we, uh, me and him, we, we, you know, we've been here. I think you've been here about a month. Hey, we tight. No, you've been here. Hell, I ain't, I ain't been here. I think I've been here three weeks. He probably been. I can't keep up with time. He probably been here about three weeks, I guess. Him. Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. We've been here at this particular house a little bit over a month, maybe. Yeah. Mm hmm. Mm -hmm. yeah. Okay. Okay. So, um, mm -hmm. um, if you guys have any more questions, bring it and um, we can wrap it up. Um, it's almost 2 a.m. here. So a lot of people, um, you know, I know it's, it's morning in Tanzania. So you know I'm saying, so um, bring your last questions and we can ask Uncle Jarvis. But if you haven't subscribed um, to his channel, Amazing Africa Mama Land, please go ahead and do so. And also, um, he has a foundation, an orphanage that he's trying to really support. So go to Living My Best Life in Ghana at gmail.com, living my best life in Ghana at gmail.com and email if you want to support the foundation you know just just email them and say hey I want to contribute to the orphanage and they'll guide you through the whole process on how you can basically support um bring your question Bring your question. Bring your questions in. If you have any question, bring it in. So, um, Uncle Jarvis, what will be your last word for tonight? Uh, what will be your last word for tonight? And well, you know, we, we know we have to be here for two hours. Thank you so much for your time. Like we, we tell everybody, man. Uh, you know, don't take my word for it. Come and see for yourself, okay? And we're not okay. saying that you have to come to Tanzania. There, there are 54 different countries. Just choose yeah. one. Whatever one you in your life. What we're trying to do with living my best life in Ghana, we want to have people on the ground in different countries to assist you when you get there. That's what mm -hmm. we're trying to do. Now, okay. you won't have a problem. There's a lot of them there to assist you in Ghana. And yeah. we're here to assist you in Tanzania. And, and there are other individuals here. As a matter of fact, uh, all the repats that are here, we're going to have a luncheon together very soon. Yeah. Okay. We are planning it. Um, okay, so I'm reading. Nah, yeah. you won't have to quarantine. Nah, we don't do that stuff here. We don't wear masks, none of that kind of stuff. No. <laughs> but you will have to get that. You will have to get that test. That remember I was telling you about. Um, you have to get yeah. have a negative COVID test, and it can't be no more than seventy two hours old. Oh. That you'll have to have, and that's it. Okay. You can come on. In. Yeah, and uh, okay. you're gonna need. Uh, uh, to get the visa, it's $100 uh, for the okay. visa. Um, uh, Jamaican citizens don't have to, no, they don't need a visa if you're a Jamaican citizen. My mm -hmm. father-in-law, uh, the three of us came in, they looked at his uh, passport and say, sir, you go have a seat over there. Mm -hmm. You two, come with me with your $100. <laughs> mm -hmm. Now, let me answer this question for uh, Brother Malcolm. He said, question. Why is shipping a vehicle a problem when 99% of the vehicles in Ghana are, uh, are foreign makes and model? Ghana has just one auto manufacturer and most Ghanaians don't even drive it. Well, shipping the vehicle is not a problem. Now, the reason why, you know, there's a lot of foreign vehicles in Ghana is because this, there, there are big companies in Ghana that ship these vehicles in big containers. So they don't spend a lot of money on shipping because they save money. They're not shipping just one vehicle. They're shipping a fleet of vehicles. So they, they get to save money, discount. They have people at the hub that will basically work with them. These are big companies. We're talking about you individual trying to ship your one single car to Ghana. The struggle that you pass through to clear it and everything if you have the finances to do so, why not? Just go ahead and do it. But all what we're saying is if you don't have enough cash, don't test the process and later on complain about how bad it is. Also, 
their uh, limitations as far as uh, the 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 year of the vehicle. I think the vehicle can't be no more than ten years old. I believe. Yeah, yeah. And, and you can you can bring one older than that now. I told mm -hmm. you, I, I had a I had a vintage. I had a seventy eight. You mm -hmm. know, and they're talking man, several thousands of dollars because the vehicle is so old. Mm hmm. You know, and I said, man, it's just not worth it. You know, it's, it's not, not worth it for me, for me. Now, for yeah. other people, it may be. But for me, it wasn't worth it. So, you know, mm -hmm. I just uh, I chose not to. Yeah. yeah. And um, even with the furniture and stuff like that, I just I just thought to me. My money could be spent better by purchasing furniture here. Mm hmm. That's just me now. I, I, you know, I, I speak from a personal. I can't say what you you know, want to do. You know, you might have a, 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 a some furniture that's worth whatever to you because you know it was your mama's or something like that, and you don't mind paying three thousand dollars to get it over here. Well, that's mm -hmm. you. Go right ahead. You know. Mm -hmm. I just yeah. I don't choose to do that. That's just me. Yeah, so, everyone I'm, is different. It's just a suggestion. I was closing, right? Yeah. Uh, just. Main thing I say is you have to come and see for yourself. Okay. okay. And as I said, I'm, I'm not just promoting Tanzania. This is where I live. You mm -hmm. Ghana, Gambia, there's so many countries. Choose whatever you like. Now, the only thing I don't like about where I live here is there's not a beach here. We have mountains, lakes, but there's not a beach here. You have to go to okay. like Dar es Salaam, uh, Zanzibar. It's a uh, 10, maybe 10, 11 hours away, beautiful mm -hmm. beaches, you know. Mm -hmm. um, but I, I can go to the beach if I want to. I just take a bus, train, drive, whatever, you know. Mm -hmm. um, but Kofi, mm -hmm. if, if there's any more question, I'll go ahead and take, and then I'm out. Okay, so take this last question, and then, you know, we will let you go. Is it best to learn a lot of Swahili before coming to settle? Well, I mean... That's almost just just learn what you can. Not a whole lot. You just need to say hello, uh, you know, thank you, uh, you know, how to count the money and stuff like that. And then at, when you get here, it'll be easier because everybody's going to be speaking it around you. However, you okay. can take a little class. We have like little classes on uh, on YouTube. Take mm -hmm. Swahili. Learn a mm -hmm. bit. And then when you get here, they'll practice with it, you know, and they love it when you when, when you speak a little bit of language, they look at you and smile, you know, yeah, they like that. Yeah. yeah. Because they can relate. Yeah. Yeah. And, uh, you know, maybe they'll try to speak English and their English is not so great. And, and, you know, we help them and they help us. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And this is about working together. Things that we couldn't get together there. We, mm -hmm. we have to get together here. We have to. We don't have any other choice. We have to work together, you know. Okay. We have to work together. That's the only way we're gonna make it work, is to work together. Okay. And uh, man, I, it's two o'clock over there. Oh, we're what, eight. We're eight fifty-four here uh, in the morning. And uh, you know, you guys need to get some rest. But uh, we appreciate the time. We appreciate you allowing us to even uh, be on your platform. Um, Hope that we've uh, inspired some people. Um, and we're people. always available whenever you want us. We're available for you, okay? Because you're okay. our brother, you know, and we're always available for you. Um, you know, the people who need to contact me, uh, you can contact us through Living My Best Life in Ghana at gmail.com. You know, um, we we allow them to manage for us, but because um, it just got kind of overwhelming with so many people emailing me and. And calling me and stuff that um, it got overwhelming for it. So I, I, I can't, you know, I can't do that. You know, right. so you go through them and they'll 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 send you to me. Especially okay. if you come in this way, if you come into Tanzania, we're here for you, okay? We are okay. here for you. So in saying that, I say Kofi once again, hey, we appreciate you and uh we'll chat with you uh offline and uh we'd be glad to do it whenever you would like to have us, okay? Um, okay. Please go to our channel. Go to our channel and subscribe. Uh, and please donate to the orphanage. We need all the help we can get. And we're going to thank everybody in advance. We thank everybody on your platform. 
Thank you for your help. Thank you so much. Thank you for listening to us. Uh, you know, and anything we can do to help, man, we're here to help our people, you know? So yeah, we say peace, peace and blessing to each and every one, okay? All okay, right. and thank you so much too for your time. Um, thank you so much. Um, you know, I really appreciate Uncle, you know, uh, uh, um, Javis time. That was two hours, 19 minutes he spent with us. I really appreciate everyone being here. Like he said, you know, he's not trying to really, you know, uh, um, um, sell, you know, Tanzania to you. He's basically just telling you his experience. And, you know, what he would suggest you do is just, just go and experience yourself. And there are 54 countries, you know, on the African continent. You don't have to go to Tanzania. You don't have to go to Ghana. You don't have to go to Gambia. You can go, you can go to Rwanda. There are so many countries out there. Just go and experience it yourself. There's no harm in trying. You only live once, you know, just, just, just try and just get a passport, go and travel. You see what I'm saying? Enjoy once in a while get some different type of experience and if you feel connected if you feel wow i'm you know i'm really connected to, to this place and i really want to move go ahead and do it don't let anything stop you don't let anything stop you just take the chances and go you know that's what that that's that's what i'll say and um you know if you have any question for me as well, you can go ahead. But thank you so much for everyone being on here. It's, it, it has been an amazing time. I know it's really late, but thank you so much. Um, if you haven't subscribed to the platform, you can go ahead and do so. If you haven't smashed the like button, you can go ahead and do so. And if you want to be a member on the channel, you can definitely do so. Just click on this link and you can become a member on the channel you can click the link i just put below and you can become a member on the channel um if you want to send me an email as well you can go ahead and do so uh we have a trip coming up to ghana in next year may um, we already have 15 people going so if you want to join us you can email me and just ask me hey how do i join the trip you can go ahead and do so as well but that's the email as well that's that's my email right there you can email me and, um, you know, we can basically talk about whatever question you might have. But, um, you know, if you want to be a member on this channel, you can go ahead and do so. I just put a link below and join to be a member. Um, if you have any question for me, if you want to join for anything, you can go ahead and do so. Um, I'll just give 15 minutes on here for anybody who want to share you know anything for the, the rest of the viewers if you have something to share with us you know about retiring on the african continent you know should you or should the african diaspora even retire on the african continent because i know you know that retirement check in the u.s you know it, it's it's not you you will not get value for your money i definitely know you know you will get value for your money on the african continent and i i'm talking from what i know so you know, if you really want to join and share some few quick information, I'm giving 15 minutes. It's just, you know, it's currently 1.59. When it's 2.15, we'll end the live. So, you know, I'm giving 15 minutes um, to take some few questions that I'll answer myself and, you know, for anyone who wants to join to, you know, to bring a quick, you know, information in and you know also motivate anyone watching that if you are interested in moving to the african continent visiting you should do so don't let anybody scare you and don't pay no mind to any negative comment there will always be distractions you know don't care about all that you know media stereotypes just go ahead and experience it yourself right you know go ahead and experience it yourself you know you can make thousands of excuses you know just make one you know get one specific reason and travel you know because if you want to make a bunch of excuses for not you know traveling to the african continent you can get a thousands of them you know but you know you just need one reason uh, you know to do it so um you can basically call in and join with that link and um or you can ask me a few questions um and um you know i can answer it for you 
um thank you so much for all those who you know donated the super chat thank you so much if you want to be a patron you can also you know join patreon basically i patreon you get access to me 247 we talk all the time through the patreon malcolm said you are the man then you keep up the good work i love how truthful you are with everything bless up thank you so much brother thank you so much and i appreciate your time everyone's time being on here man it's been an amazing journey and you know we just hit 10k subscribers that's a lot of people who agree with the message and the platform you know i, I know we we got a lot of hate sometimes you know from afar but guess what it's part of the whole journey you, you can't expect everyone to appreciate what you're doing or love it so you know i just i just endlessly appreciate everyone who is supporting the platform you know it's just amazing um I'm planning to visit guy in february for six weeks but i'm worried i won't want to return um yes it's 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 one of those feelings you get when you get there you see it for yourself it's just you might not want to return just like you know I'm, you saying you might not want to return uh um you know you you might not want to return perfect timing next year i'll be there at the retirement age looking forward to coming home i definitely will keep my mind brother kofi thank you so much john kofi thank you so much uh, you know you have my name as for john kofi you know i don't know if you have a family from ghana but um yes you know don't let anybody stop you trust me if you can live in the u.s right you can live anywhere in the world and especially if you are a retired person like i said before you only need a source of income to sustain yourself on the african continent and you know i'm here giving you my advice right and i'll always give you my honest opinion and what i think is the best i've i have helped um you know about three to you know four people move to ghana and based on that experiences, I can tell you certain approaches that you can basically go through. You know, a lot of people, you know, like to do certain things their own way. And then when they face challenges, sometimes they try to complain. But trust me, when you decide to move to the African continent, when you go there, build connection. You see how Uncle Jarvis got people who is taking care of him, helping him get through, you know, certain things. That's how it's supposed to be. Make sure you build that connection with, with, with the local people. Find one reliable person to be a brother with, to be a friend. And trust me, they'll get you through a lot of stuff. You know, I had to, you know, hold a brother's hand, rent a six bedroom house for him at a price he would never would have got if he did it himself. You see what I'm saying? So it is really important to build that connection don't just you know uh, um feel like you can do everything yourself because you cannot you know i know it's really private in the u.s people try to do things you know by themselves and figure but you need help you know you need help um i would like to know about the quality of medical care as you medic medicare is not accepted there from america um I have no information about that, but in Africa, it's always pay as you go. You gotta have cash for you know every health issues, and trust me, it's affordable. If you can pay health insurance and healthcare in the U.S., you can basically afford it on any African uh, um, country or in any African country. Uh, um, I have a passport, Golden Hat. I just wanted to say thank you again for the super chat. I really appreciate the support uh you know i really appreciate the love thank you so much i have a passport multi-entry ghana visa yellow fever card but i keep hesitating take that step take it don't 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 let nothing stop you just say hey at this point i'm gone i'm gone i'm not i'm not trying to you know listen to nobody or watch anything that would distract me i'm gone you need to take that step you have acquired the passport. You have got the motor entry visa. You got a yellow fever card. You just need a plane ticket. You just you just one step away from being in Ghana. Just just do it. You know, just do it. Um, John Kofi, I'm at um, you know retirement age next year too. That's good. 
um if you are young try buying a land now and build in africa rent it until you are ready to retire airbnb sells like crazy in ghana especially now with the exodus yes you know i have uh, multiple lands in ghana i just need cash to build a house or build some property on it i don't have money but i have the lands but you know if you can afford to purchase the land and you can afford to build something on it do it trust me because you know land prices is now going up in, in most african countries and you know it, you can go ahead and purchase some and develop it you know it's 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 all business that you know help you resettle and also you know keeps you going out also bringing a lot of ideas and open doors for you to also venture into other businesses so if you can you know purchase land and build an airbnb like a brother suggesting it will help you easily settle easily settle yeah so yeah do you thank you so much melanita royalty for being a good moderator on the channel um thank you so much i really appreciate the support everything you do on this channel for me it's all love and i really appreciate it thank you so much um thank you so much he said, what's the cheapest land at this point? I mean, I, I, land, land is based on location. You see what I'm saying? Land is based on. You can get land for any price you want, even in the U.S. You know, if you want land, you know, in the suburb, in the, you know, in the outskirts, you know, in the play, you know, like land is all about location. You can get it for $500, $600. But guess what? Is the location worth the price at that specific time? If you are looking for a land for, you know, building your house and, you know, you need a better location. You see what I'm saying? So I would suggest you do an estimate from $3,000 upwards and you can get a good location for land for a size of maybe one fourth of an acre. Yes, yeah, snail farming is 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 big. It's not huge in Ghana, but it's it's there. No, thirty thousand dollars upwards. Thirty thousand dollars upwards. You can get a decent land at a decent location that will not be too far from the main cities. where is the best place to look for airline ticket you can go to sky scanner or you can go to my channel there's a video that i made that can really help you get you know the most affordable ticket prices to you know the african continent just go to my channel and watch that video you see cheap cheap um cheapest ticket to africa you see that video and you can watch um Um, I have a Trinidad citizenship stamp in my U.S. passport. They only look at the U.S. passport. They will not look at the stamp. So if you have a U.S. passport, you need to get a visa to travel to Ghana. They will not really pay attention to the Trinidad um, stamp. They only pay attention to the passport. So the passport you have is a U.S. passport. So basically, based on that, you need to get a visa. The, the 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 flood is in accra accra floods a lot because of poor drainage system that's why accra floods but there are certain places that doesn't but the main towns floods a lot because they have poor drainage system um greetings i'm right in understanding that foreigners cannot own land um in ghana you can have it for 50 years as a lease then but you can you can you can own it for free freehold you can it's 50 years um you know use it for that 50 years enjoy your life 50 years on there um if you can buy a land now for 39 dollars do a project on it for 50 years and you still own that land whatever you're using that land for you probably will make 10 times to 100 times 
the profit by the end of 50 years, you know. Should we get the visa to Ghana before or after we get there? Well, you can get a visa on arrival in Ghana or you can get it from here. The only difference is, you know, visa on arrival is, you know, a little bit expensive. It's like $150. But if you get it from the U.S., it's $100 and 60 for the standard application. Oh, thank you so much. Okay, this is, this is, um, okay, this is uh, um, Uncle Jarvis' uh, uh, um, channel. Go, Af uh, Amazing Africa Mama Land, go and subscribe to his channel. He's watching direct from Arusha. Thank you so much. Um, thank you so much, um, Uncle Jarvis. Thank you so much um, for your time being on here. But go ahead and subscribe. We have we have four minutes to end this live. And, um, you know, if you haven't subscribed, just go ahead and do so. And like I said, my email is right there. If you have any question, you can go ahead and do so. Um, if you want to become a patron, you can go ahead and do so as well. Um, you know, with patron, you can basically connect with me on the, um, 247 is like every day you can connect with me on patreon just click on this link and um you know you can support on patreon you can also become a member of the channel you know it's just two dollars uh um uh, yes yes you you can get a visa right here before you go um it it will save you you know the time you gotta wait at the airport to get the, the the visa on arrival you know so if you you I, I would say just get it here before you travel uh, you know hey thank you for joining is this uncle Jarvis? hey hi. oh that's yeah. okay how you doing i'm fine bro how are you i'm good i'm good i'm good i'm good we almost done with the life i was I was, um, you know, I just spoke to Uncle Jarvis for like two hours, you know, now. So, um, you know, um, you have anything to share with us? Um, Where are you right now? I think I, right now I'm, a, I'm in Russia at the orphanage, Faraja Orphanage Children's Home. Okay. I uh, have been okay. busy with the kids. Uh, there is some stuff I'm to settle down, but I hope Mr. Jarvis tell you a lot of things about mm -hmm. our channel and what we are doing here in Africa. Yeah, in Tanzania. Mm -hmm. And then, uh, uh, as mm -hmm. Okay, uh, go ahead. As, as what we all do, as what you are doing, guys, uh, I am really interested after talking, to, uh, after meeting Jarvis, and now I am also trying to convince them to come to Africa. They don't have to be scared, and they don't have to think what the white people want them to think, because, you know, the issue is white people are always creating boundaries between us black people uh, i mean diaspora mm -hmm. and uh, black people in mm -hmm. they, they always what they don't want to see is so what we know something that is from from our ancestors you know we are doing something that our ancestors are happy where they are mm -hmm. when they say now they, they this they are doing doing and they are, as a African young youngsters I am also joining this stream. I met with a lot of uh, diasporas who are now coming okay. to Africa, and uh, I, I am trying to 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 make them feel like they are at home. 
Okay. And uh, I learned it through you guys. And my father, who, who just came earlier than them, and now they are convincing them to come. Like, it's a nice place from... I, I learned this from you. I, I used to watch your channel after me to his Uncle Jarvis. I used to watching I Marwa and a lot of channels like uh, Life in Ghana. Mm -hmm. They are among of the people who convinced me to keep doing this. Okay. But, but also this project of the I was being working with the white people since I was young because I, I grew up in the orphanage. I went okay. to school, I went to college, and I graduated here at the orphanage. So I know, I know they have, I, I met with uh, some situation that is not good, it's not good, mm -hmm. but we have to be on that situation because we are dependent them we need their help okay so sometimes they come here with criteria they are what they want to do something which we don't love and sometimes we tell them like this is not fair but you know they sometimes they go away without giving us the donation they cannot donate to the orphanage because you don't want to hear but you don't want to give us to do what we want to do. They will come. You don't know them, but the first day they want to sleep with the kids. Wow. I want to live the same place. I want to be the same the same place with the with these kids because I want to experience the orphanage and with them like you you cannot sleep in the same room. Because they don't know you. And these are the kids. Yeah. When anything bad happen, it's it's the government will ask us, not you. Yeah. So for sure, those we are, cannot give you this. Those are this. Those are those are, those are uh, uh, don't 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 let them even get 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 access to the kids. Those are pedophiles, um, pervert. Don't 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 let them don't let them get closer to the kids. Mm -hmm. Take their. Don't don't let them get uh, closer to the kids. They are, that's some nasty, yeah. you know. Yeah. Very nasty. One day, we, we, um, we I mean, Jarvis and the mom were walking just around. And when we get back here, around 7 or 8, we found mm -hmm. like couples of white people here playing with the kids, but some of them, you know, they sit and they hold the kids and it's night. And mm -hmm. really, mom and Uncle Javi were very disappointed with the situation. They just, they, they feel like this is, who are they? And they try to ask mm -hmm. them, like, who are you? What are you doing at this time at the orphanage? And they, they, are, uh, they are like, what's wrong? Any problem? And Uncle Jarvis tells there is a problem. Of course, this is night. You just sit here and play and and hold the kids like we don't even know you. You have to you you you, you have to come at the, this is night. The kids want to see, and we don't have enough time here, so we decided to visit to visit them at night and. You know, when I met, I, I met with the Kajavis and other people, when I talked to them on YouTube, it's where I mm -hmm. found that white people and the, the situation that I see, they want to sleep with the kids on night. They want to sleep with the kids on night and and uh, other situation I I feel they, they have something. They have something. I mean, not only volunteering or help kids, but they want to create something. There is something they want to create. And I can say mm -hmm. that because I saw, I saw 
examples of situation, you know, and not with the situation how they treat us when I was young and now I grown up, I see how they sometimes treat the kids and I keep learning, I keep learning and we are keeping strengthening the rules here at the orphanage about the volunteers and visitors mm -hmm. that they have they need to have distance, special time to come and special time to leave, not any time at day one. Mm -hmm. And and yeah, this is it. That's what we are doing. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah this is it. I, um, I spoke to I spoke to uh, Uncle Javis about it, and um, you know I have told everyone to support, bring their money in to be able to help, you know, um, push, you know, the, the, the orphanage and get all the foreigners, you know, away from getting involved. You see what I'm saying? Um, if they can, if we can help take in charge of it, then we will not need any outside influence. So what I'm saying? So, yeah, you know, I, I posted an email where they can donate and support um, on living my best life. Uh, uh, in Ghana at gmail.com. They can reach, you know, uh, um, through that email and they can support, you know, through that system. So, you know, this, we'll keep talking about it. And as time goes on, when I'm doing my life, I'll also keep bringing this up so people can always remember to support, you know, uh, um, direct to the orphanage. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but thank you so much. It's, it's two o'clock here. And a lot of people need to go to bed. So thank you so much for joining. Thank you so much. Okay. Thank you so much. And I will connect with you another time. We will keep talking and we will see you. I, I will find time and I will join you again. Okay. Okay. And um, I'll, I'll basically be, be in Tanzania next year, September. So we will definitely meet as well. Oh, you will be here? Yeah. Yeah. Next year, September. Oh. Yeah. Welcome very much. You will you will have a nice time. We will be with you. Yeah. All right. Thank you. I'll be there. I'll be there next year. We just need long life and, okay. and strength. Okay. Welcome. Welcome very much. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. So thank you so much. Um just like you hear from him, there's a lot of over there to mess up, you know, try to mess up with the kids. And, you know, because of, you know, they, they come in as they're trying to help, they get access to try to even do all this stuff. So we need to basically try our best to, you know, the little we can do, go to living my best life in Ghana at gmail.com, message them. And, you know, let them know you just wanted to support, you know, the kids and, you know, they will basically guide you on how you can go ahead and do it. And, you know, we can basically go ahead and do the little we can to make sure we don't get, you know, foreigners involved in trying to mess up with the kids. Um, um, but um, thank you so much. Thank you so much. And I appreciate everyone uh, being on here. And like I said, if you have any question you can email me and we'll talk about it. But thank you so much. I appreciate all the love and the support. And um, until then, see you another time.